Islam. Islam. Islamism. Can we stand for our prayer, open prayer, face to east? Yes, me. Allah. Father of the universe, Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, Juali Amin. Islam, Islam, greetings, everyone. I am no the view of Zakata Ibe. I reside in the position of vice consul for the office of the consul general of Morocco here at the Maryland Territory Club. Uh, what I will be speaking on is the words that were spoken by our Prophet Muhammad himself. This is to be claimed in every meeting. Islam. More signs, people of America. Home Office 3603, Indiana Avenue, Noble Drive Founder, Chicago, Illinois, January 18, 1929, to be proclaimed in every meeting. Dear brother, Islam, I am pleased to know that I have a few faithful more among you all, and I desire for the no truth and the divine truth. There is a host of jealousy, quote unquote, about me and the movement, now by people of our side of the nation that thought it was only a joke and unreal. But now that they found out by the government, officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Asians must depend upon for their earthly salvation as an American citizen. They are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they themselves may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to be longer going to pass. It is through the faithful boards that contribute to the movement and uplifting programs. Those that pay the divine respect to me will be remembered. That is why I'm calling upon all faithful Boards to increase their faithfulness to me, your father, and your prophet, and your divine Morris Moore. I need finance, and I need it bad. Never before have I needed finance as badly as I do at present. That I may shove aside the discord that's facing the nation. It all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility, quote unquote. The nations of the earth will not recognize the movement without me being the, the prophet in the head. It's been proven by my works in which I performed in the past few months, but that was at the government. When was inauguration, represent the Morris Divine National Movement. Now we had the inauguration of President Hoover for the same cause. What do I leave? The reason why that was spoken from the prophet himself is because him being a seer saw the infiltration that was taking place within our divine movement. So he entrusted a chosen food that had the sincerity and the dignity to keep the divinity of this movement together and alive so that there would not be the corruption that's in place now, as you see, with the many divisions of operations that come from this Morris movement. One of the people that you know publicly is Charles Mosley Bay. And this is the reason why the AA222141 was copyrighted in the Library of Congress. Another one is one that, that our illustrious ranch chief, Tosh Reed Bay, had the honor and the privilege to meet personally. So when Prophet Noble Dwali was speaking this, this is what we're looking at now. We are the result of the divine work that was laid down by the prophet with the few faithful moors that he chose in that time to keep this moors moving alive. So that's one of the things that you really want to take into consideration is that when he spoke these words back then, this is what we're talking about right now. So as us being the faithful moors now, we must continue to strive to push forward this moors divine movement without the corruption or the infiltration. Islam, with that I'll yield the floor and I will turn it over to the Consul General, the Martin Luther Cell. Oh, pardon me. I would, I would turn it over to our mother, Naila Kima Hill. 
his um thank you very much thank you very much thank you for that we, let's come on because a lot he did that by heart so we have allowed him we can read it but to read it from just being able because you've studied it and it comes to you is another thing and i understand you for that um, i'm not going to be before you long. i say first of all i want to welcome you to this event to this presentation i want to thank brother ali from ali of Ali Productions for inviting me, albeit sort of late, but to be uh, to host this. But I just wanted to say thank you because many of you all are, are regular viewers of House of Real Waking in Minds with Gracie Kashari Bay or Office Hours with Dr. G, um, where you know yours truly host. And before you say it, yes, I am short, but I'm not really short, I'm just more down to earth than most people. <laughs> I told Grand Sheik as we were coming down here, I said, they're going to say, she's short. And I'm going to say, no, I'm just more down to earth than most people. Um, but I walk up y'all, and I'm, I'm appreciative of having um, a brother in my life like Grand Sheik Taj Tariq Bey, who has been such a, a he, he has taken House of Real Waking Minds and the vision that was given to me almost 11 years ago to another level. I also want to recognize and acknowledge Mother Delilah Il in the back, Paciel, because she was one who, in, in the beginning, was regularly at the House of Real Women Online, videotaping and getting the information out that you all, a lot of folks are still, you know, those archival, those old, those older videos before we started doing, you know, what we're doing now. And so, honors to her. Uh, for her work. And I just want to say that I will be back to share a little bit of something, but because we are late getting started and y'all didn't come to hear me, I am going to get this presentation started as Brother Deal was about, about to do and bring on our own Brother Lamont Maurice Hill. Let's receive him. It's gone. Islam. Once again, thank you all. I am Lamont Maurice L, Consul General of Morocco. I am stationed here at Maryland State Republic. Uh, um, I actually want to give high honors to Dr. G because if it wasn't for her and her platform, I wouldn't have known myself. And uh, most definitely high honors to Grand Sheik Taj Tariq Bey because um, I'm not going to lie, I, I found it on YouTube. Started with driver's license fraud. And I saw a man with a bush. <laughs> and he looked serious. And I clicked on it. And this is after I was looking at, at um, the sister that was, uh, what was it? Uh, I can't remember her name, but she spoke about uh, how income tax was voluntary. She was a former IRS tax agent. It was a sister. I can't remember her name. And then um, as I was studying those two videos, I was scrolling on the related videos and I saw a driver's license fraud. I saw uh, Brother Taj and he had uh, another type of fez on. I um, can't remember, it was like black with uh, some shapes on it. And I clicked on it and uh, one of the first things that stood out to me to this day was we're adults, so we don't have time to believe. I'm gonna give you reference points so that you can go and check it out for yourself. So you won't say Taj said so. And that stuck with, stuck, uh, stuck with me because um, I never heard anybody tell me not to believe what they're saying. You know, well, he didn't say it directly to me, he was talking to the audience, but it was shown on YouTube. And um, he was making a lot of reference points, starting with the word driver and how that's a commercial word. And um, he spoke about connotative linguistics. I never heard of that term connotation before, which is the suggestive meaning of a word in addition to the explicit meaning. So it means it doesn't mean that. It was uh, put attached to the word for the purposes of deception. So that's an actual term, connotation. And that being the antonym of denotation, which is the true or, or explicit meaning of a word. So I was like, dang, okay, well. Driver. So why would we need a driver's license if we're not doing commercial 
activity, right? So um, then he started talking about the tree, saying that this was Morocco. I'm like, hold on, all right. <laughs> the kingdom of Morocco or here? This is Morocco? So uh, I was like, okay, well, he said, you know, reference points. And he spoke about the library of Congress. And I was at DC at that time, still am. Um, and I made a visit um, to the Library of Congress. I didn't have no other reason to go there prior uh, other than on a field trip. You know, I'm sure a lot of us went on field trips to the Library of Congress. And um, it was a big, three big building, and I didn't know where to start. So um, I asked people for the, the, the direction to the law section, and they directed me there. I can't remember what building it was, but um, I went to the uh, the person that was acting as the librarian in that section. And, um, I asked them if they heard of, of a treaty of peace and friendship between the United States of America and His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of Morocco. I uh, saw it on the website. However, I wanted to see an actual certified copy, and I saw it, and it was written in Arabic and translated into English. So I said, excuse me, French, I'll be damned. You know, uh, so, so the United States of America has a treaty with the emperor of Morocco. We all know, um, can't be talking about the kingdom of Morocco because that the head of the kingdom is the king. So who's the emperor? And where was he at? And then um, I heard Brother Taj talk about New York, the Empire State. And I always wonder why would they call New York the Empire State? They even have it on the tags, but they never gave an explanation as to why, why New York would be considered the Empire State. What else would it be considered the Empire State if the Emperor himself wasn't stationed at, at New York? I mean, that makes sense. Otherwise, what is the Empire called? So, of course, you know, you put two and two together, the Emperor of Morocco being the head of the Moroccan Empire, and um, I read uh, chapter 47 in the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America, uh, verse 6. It says, um, the Moabites from the land of Moab, who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa, they were the founders, were as past tense. And then it says, and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire. He said, present. That's present tense. So that means we're still living among kingdoms and empires. That it's just that they took a specific class of people and mentally incorporated them. So now we think uh, uh, kings are presidents, right? And we think that the place we live is a corporate state or or state of Maryland, which is really an incorporation. And the institutions that they call school were actually institutions. You get the same ID that you get in prison. The same classrooms, settings as in prison. Same buses as prison buses. Ask me, I've been there. And, um, you know, getting back to a uh, uh, grand sheet, Taj to Bay. Hey, um, I did a lot of research and studying, and I'm actually a person of action. So the only way I'll know truly if it's real is if I actually do it. So before I actually met Taj I met him on YouTube. And I studied and I studied and I studied, and then I saw a brother out at New Jersey with a black feds standing before a foreign hybrid European college female, challenging her jurisdiction and talking to him, her as if he had the authority. So I was like, damn, this is real. You know, we really are in our own land, right? right? And of course, you know, the people before us gave hints and clues, but you don't know it until you do it, until you be what you know. So I told myself, okay, I have six months from January to May, because uh, my life date is May 15th. And May 15th is when the drop I was license expired, and that was when I actually took the time to uh, let it expire and exercise my right to travel. So me, uh, I don't want to 
give up too information, too much information, but I'm a double sword, so I said, man of action. So I went out looking to get pulled over, traveling with dead, dead tags, no uh, driver's license, no insurance, and a whole bunch of tickets. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, when I did that the uh, the first time, you know, they let me go because of uh, the language I was speaking. I was like, well, you know, I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm still waiting on my national tag to get here. Um, but I know I have dead tags, you know, DC tags, they're dead. But I didn't want to ride around with no tags because then you all put me over thinking to stole a car. However, you need a, a, a search warrant. This is what I said the first time I got pulled over, I was studying, stuttering, my hands were sweating, all that. Um, and I said, um, you need a search warrant. Uh, and furthermore, I'm not under your jurisdiction. And that policy enforcer said, well, we're just looking for guns. I was like, well, I got no gun. He was like, all right, man, let's go ahead and do this. So he let me go. I was like, damn. So I didn't get a traffic ticket. I didn't get no summons to court. So I, that's what I was looking for. Um, long story short, I don't want to take up too much time because, you know, we, we were uh, setting up and it took a, a while for us to set up. Um, got pulled over. I didn't get the tank. They took my car and um, had to come to court for a few tickets. But it was two traffic cases. They merged this one. This is DC Superior Court. And um, the like as soon as uh, I started, like the first time I was scared. And I, I looked up on rbbaypublications.com and I found Mother Delilah's number. And I reached out to her. And she was my coach. Every time I went to court, she would give me this pep talk. You know, like, you know, this is this is your initiation. You said you want to be a motion man? American, want to be yourself? Now you got to face that paper monster called the District of Columbia. Just know that it's not real. You're real. They're, they're all pretend hiding behind the mask. Then she told me about the story about the Wizard of Oz. I was like, man, that makes sense. You know, you know, you got the big floating head with two flames on both sides. Uh, what was that? Boaz and Jesse. Uh huh. And um, then just for the dog, dog spelled backwards. God. So run to the curtain, pull the curtain back, see if just a little Caucasian man standing behind the curtain. Right? That's what the District of Columbia is. That's the state of Maryland is. That's what the state of California, the Internal Revenue Services, the United States, all of these are illusions. They're the great wizard of Oz. And behind the curtain is foreign hybrid European colonists. Right? And they never forgot that they were they know they colonized this land now the thought came in my mind uh it was like an epiphany well when you strip everybody that's branded negro black and color strip them of their normal urban clothing and then put indigenous clothing on them and stand them by the people in the that they show the national geographics as the indigenous people Stand us right next to them, and then you won't see no difference. Right or wrong? Right. I thought about that. And I was like, well, damn, yeah, well, we would be, if we were the first man, which really, woman is the first man, man with a womb. Um, but just speaking as collective, if we were the first, we would be the aboriginal people of the world. How would they say that they brought us from one continent over to another continent if the people here look? just like the people over there right so i thought about that so then i was like okay you know eventually you know uh shout out to uh delilah because she coached me just real quick she coached me through all four cases and then the four case just real quick the four case i said okay i keep going, going back to court and it, they keep transferring me to judge to judge to judge i mean what do i do now she was like well stop going to court why do you keep going I was like, well, they keep saying if I don't come back, they're going to issue a bench warrant. She's like, all right. Okay, well, are they talking to you? Or are they talking to Lamont Maurice Butler, the black male? I was like, well, they're not talking about me, but they're talking about me. And then that's when I saw where the deception is. This is why it's important to know thyself, right? And when you know yourself, the common senses that apply 
when you're speaking to someone just like you, you won't let them play you. Applies to everyone. You shouldn't let nobody play you if you know who you are. So I said, okay, you're right. She said, did you find your default judgment? I said, well, no, 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 I didn't find that. So I went in there, sent it off, and, uh, and I said, just don't come back. She said, no, don't go back. Even if they try to kidnap you, yeah, well, let them kidnap you. But don't go into the line. Then why would you do that? Right? So um, I didn't come back. But, but just to be sure, um, the Scorpio moon in me was like, all right, I got the, I got, because my emotions started rising. And then my mom is a Scorpio sun. So she challenged me. I'm Taurus moon. So we, I mean, a uh, Taurus sun. So we going back and forth. Like, I'm not listening. I'm not, I don't care. I'm not going. You saw me go all these times, and I'm not tripping. I know what I'm talking about. If they had the authority. They held me in contempt of court. But they did. They just kept talking trash and rescheduling and saying, we're going to take you to trial. They never took me to trial. But it was always a hearing. And then the, uh, the second to last day, the third time I went, they switched up the courtroom and sent me to a wrong courtroom so I could FTA. Right? So they do all types of things. Um, but the time I didn't go, uh, I contacted what they call the judge's chamber just to confirm that they got the default judgment. And they know that I'm not supposed to go. And I remember Taj saying also in um, in YouTube that don't go because, you know, uh, 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 you want to just defend yourself. Go to teach people in the crowd because technically you don't have to be there. But by you being there, you're going to be the light in the room. So you demonstrate, not for you, but for the people that don't know who they are, the people that's being human traffic in these uh, uh, venues called traffic court. Because that's human trafficking. That's exactly what traffic was. There's no such thing as traffic court. So um, I did just that. Uh, contacted, uh, think of, real quick, I did that, meaning uh, I met some people in the crowd, you know, talked to them, showed them some of my paperwork, and um, I referred them to the website that uh, I was studying from, which was, at that time, it was uh, rvbaypublications.com. So um, the last time I didn't go back to the venue, I contacted the judges' chambers and and uh, I told the clerk that you all get the default judgment, the notice default judgment. Just so happened to be a sister, you know, stateless person. And we got it. It don't mean nothing. You need to come to court. I was like, well, no, no, no. Y'all got the job found. Yeah, it's foul. That doesn't mean anything. You need to come to court. Oh, you're going to get a bench warrant. I was like, well, right, well, let me talk to the judge. You can't talk to the judge. I'm like, well, well, wait a minute. You can't just tell me I got to come to court. You better come to court. So we going back and forth, right? Now, um, my mother was on three-way. I was young at the time. I was 27. My mother was on three-way. She contacted them on three-way because I wanted her to hear that I didn't have to come to court. And the lady, the court was saying the opposite. So I'm like, Damn, you're not, you're not, you know, doing the job. You're supposed to say I'm not coming back. I don't have to come back. No, you have to come back. So I'm going back and forth with this lady, and my mother child and she's no, 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 no. He'll be there. Don't worry, he'll be there. Right? Scorpio <laughs> your mind. I love her. So um, I didn't come to court. You know, she, you know, gave me the third degree, and then uh, I just rolled over. She went to court. She went to the venue, and of course uh, there was no one in there but the clerk and the clerk told her yeah well um they caught their son's case he didn't come and he, she said okay well what happened she said well uh the state threw it out she's like what do you mean the state threw it out well uh he didn't come so he sent some paperwork in and they threw it out she was like well so he's not going to get a bench warrant he's like well no they threw it out now i love my mom because and i think in some type of way she taught me this about teaching me this. Um, she always likes to get receipts. She likes receipts. So she's like, okay, if he ain't got to come and this case is dismissed, and I see some type of printout or something, he said, sure. Printing out all the charges dismissed. Now, um, she came back home and she didn't want to tell me, you were right. She just stood there and looked at me. 
you know, and I actually forgot. I went to sleep, woke up, got some cereal. Then I started, uh, you know, went back on the website, started to study. She came and she just stood right there. And I'm like, what's up? She was like, um, what's this paperwork that you filed? I was like, paper, what are you talking about? Oh, the case, what happened? I want to see that affidavit default, whatever that is. Let me see that. I was like, I don't have it on me, it's on a thumb drive. She was like, Well, can you go print it off the library? I was like, Yeah, sure. But what happened? She just looked at me and she was like, She don't like to admit for some reason. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not talking trash to Scorpio. I'm just saying sometimes y'all don't like it. So <laughs> but I was like, so what happened? She was like, Well, um, it's upstairs on the uh dining room table. And she just went upstairs, you know, went up in her room. So I ran upstairs and looked on the dining room table, and it said, uh, failure to pay, dismiss, no permit, which is license, dismiss, uh, uh, improper tags, dismiss, case dismissed. And then under that, it said, file, affidavit of fact, notice of default judgment. I was like, man, so it's dismissed. I ran upstairs, knocked on the door. So is this, so it's over? They told you it was over? You got the paper. <laughs> you don't want to just say that. I, so I was excited, and then the following week, um, I came to the Everlasting Life Center right here, and did that. at that time, the front of the room was right here, you know? yeah. and there was a long table, and uh, the brother was hosting. Uh, his name was Haru, um, and as as Taj was speaking, um, Haru was to the time. I was saying, you know, he wanted me to come up and, uh, you know, tell what happened in the case the prior week. So I came up, uh, showed my paperwork, and I announced that the case was dismissed. You know, and everybody, you know, clapped and all of that. That's actually on the, um, that that class uh, from 2012, March, is on um, the YouTube channel, Enforce the Constitution. And um, that was the first time I actually actually spoke next to our grand sheet brother Tosh I felt really proud you know but um I also thought that I was catching up with everyone you know like I thought that everybody in the movement was traveling without a driver's license I actually thought also that the more science simple of America when I heard temple because it's different from here in church I heard temple I was thinking of something great I was thinking about Taj Mahal and you know what I'm saying some big Big royal thing, you know, uh, grand sheets pulling up in roses because this is our land and we're royal with the nobility, you know. And uh, did I research sheets and moors and noble families around the world? And that's what I saw. Not saying that you know I was trying to be materialistic, but why wouldn't you live as a noble heir? Why wouldn't you want to look your best at all times? So when I went to the more science Temple of America. At DC, I'm not gonna put the specific one. I saw a rundown house. And I couldn't go through the front, but I had to go through the back door. And this is 2012. We had flat screens back in 2012. It was a big, big bubble screen. Hold up chairs. And then you know, Nobu Drew Ali was spoken as if he was Jesus, someone to be worshipped. And the sheets was talking like and preachers. So I was confused. So I sat through all the meeting, and then after the meeting was over, I asked, well, um, yeah, so when, when, when do you all go over uh, civics? Uh, wow. Right? Wow. Well, is that on Sundays? Because I remember reading <laughs> um, the uh, Divine Constitution and Bylaws, what's that, Act 6? From uh, uh, out of Sunday school comes the guidance of a nation. So the people that God as a nation has to know what civics. civics. So civics Sunday, right? Yeah. Holy day Friday. No, 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 no. We don't, we don't teach none of that. That's that great seal stuff. That all that. No, no, no. We don't do that here. Don't try to say nothing about that. And I was like, well, wait a minute. You know, um, well, I'm new, but I did read the Morris literature, and I and in the Morris literature and the divine <laughs> one by the prophet for the nations, he said. Hey, what the great missionary work is, and that's the enforcement of our constitution, right? So that we can learn to love instead of hate. That's not what that meant. No, no more. That's not. Man. 
Not with that man. But what do you mean? Enforce the Constitution. What? He said, no, nah, we, we're not doing that here, brother. Matter of fact, hey, brother, brother, come, come here real quick. Uh, 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 let the brother know, you know, what it is that we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come over here, brother. See, we 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 follow the prophet's words. And he you know start doing all of that, and I'm not a follower. No, I'm not saying that uh we don't need to follow because following a pattern is how you learn. Nevertheless, I don't follow anything. Because you know, uh that, that's what attracted me to Todd. He said, Don't believe what I say. I'm gonna give you reference points so that you can go and check it out for yourself. One of those reference points was more limited, divine one by the prophet for the nation. You deal with the sound? Okay. I think I keep hearing myself go up. Um, and, you know, one plus one is two. And when the sun is up, 12 o'clock noon, you know, you can't tell me it's midnight. So why are you telling me that I'm not reading what I'm reading? And then, uh, I I saw another YouTube video and I talked to Sister uh, Delilah and saw another YouTube video with uh, Brother Todd and talked to another sister. And um, they talked about the infiltration. And I was like, oh man, so it's always something. It's always something that's holding us back, right? And uh, I'm studying the, the uh, Black Panther movement, the Nation of Islam movement at that time. Um, what was it, Move? Move seven or move nine, who was that in uh, Jersey or Philly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the Tulsa, Oklahoma bombings and all of that. Um, and I saw the common denominator. The common denominator was we in the past continued to choose personalities over principles. We didn't vet the people that were infiltrated because they looked like us. And that was what Noble Drew Ali said in the Divine Warning by the Prophet for the Nations and in what uh, Brother uh, Adil read to be proclaimed in every meeting. It is our people. I mean, how else would uh, a, a group of other people, foreigners, come on, on our land, the land of the free and the home of the brave, and take over if our people didn't help them? How? We're strong, we're fearless, we're intelligent. Push any one of us in the water, we're going to learn how to swim. Straight up. I don't know how to swim. Get pushed in the water. You're going to be splashing and everything. You're going to stay above water as long as you can. That's our nature. That's our makeup. So, I came up with the uh, uh, a maxim of my own. Choose principles over personality. And I connected it with the ancient maxim, many are called, but few are chosen. And when you hear that maxim that's read out of the Bible, you think that they're talking about this supreme deity, God. He's the one that you, right? No, you do. You choose who you associate yourself with. Birds of a feather flock together. So if someone among you is flocking a different direction, but they're wearing your clothing, your turban, your face, you need to judge that man or that woman by their principle, not by their personality. Because the personality is the reason why we're still in a predicament that we're in. This is 2000, Gregorian calendar year, this is 2021. Noble Dr. Ali has came on this scene and has given us everything it takes to save a nation. A long, over 100 years ago. And we're still stagnant. Which is why um, when he said it'll be the third and fourth generation that's going to come into this movement with their eyes wide open, seeing and knowing, it's going to sit you old boys in the back, not talking about age, the old way of thinking, right? Um, I'm not bragging when I say this, I'm not boasting, but I am one of those new moors, and I have no tolerance for someone's personality because of the shit that I went through. And I had to go through it so that I wouldn't have that tolerance. And then I heard Taj went through it. 
You know, he went through some things. He lost some things. He would share his story every once in a while in these meetings. And while I was going through the fire, which is what Noble Jurali said, some of the good boys is going to be down. Take some of my good boys through the fire. Right? I, I was one of them. I went through the fire. If you all know about the Montgomery County Mansion case in 2013, that case was dismissed for lack of jurisdiction. They didn't talk about that. They talked about everything leading up to sentencing. They didn't talk. All of the reporters was in the case. I mean, in the courtroom. No, not one of them talked about, yeah, it was dismissed. They, they overturned all the charges. And what they did was they swapped out the case numbers. I found out at the last minute the jury said guilty for all the charges in the new case. So I had to go to uh, Montgomery County Detention Center, which is called Seven Locks. Seven Locks, Delilah, Samson. Samson. <laughs> and um, they didn't give me any paper. They sent me straight to lockup. So the, I had available was sick call request form. I took the back of the sick call request form. They gave me a small little rubber pen. And, you know, the desk, you know, anybody that's been locked up, you know what I'm talking about. It's like a little desk. Sometimes you get cells that don't have desks. Sometimes they do. The desk is small. The chair is a, a small, round, metal chair. And you sit there too long, you feel like your butt goes flat. Right? And it goes numb. Nevertheless, I was not trying to go to prison. Or I wasn't in to go to prison for 60 years because that was what they were trying to do and um i stayed up all hours of the night rewriting and rewriting and rewriting a writ of four warrants off the top of my head on the back of a sick call request form and uh it was for 55 days pending sentencing and and when i went up i had a trash bag full of copies of documents mm -hmm. <laughs> so they laughed when i came in the courtroom you know in the venue, you know, like this, with the with the trash bag in my hand, put it on the table, and um, I came in there and something told me to speak with authority, speak with clearness and with power, and that was a chapter. What chapter was that? Chapter in the circle seven. When you stand before the uh, the uh, the brotherhood, and he said he answered all questions with clearness and with power anyway um terrence j mcgann was the person acting as an administrative clerk in the case called the judge and uh i met him before they said he was the worst judge in the whole montgomery county circuit court they made the case a track for complex case i didn't know what that was i know what complex I mean they complicated i was like they can't be talking about me being complicated it's, you don't have jurisdiction you can't can't prove it. But anyway, went before him. First thing I said was, um, remove these cuffs. I need you to remove, remove these cuffs. He said, uh, okay, uh, Mr. L, um, deputy, could you remove the cuffs? And I said, oh, shit, you removed them. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I said, remove them her too. Because uh, the sister, you know, who I was, uh, my consort at the time, you know, she was, you know, riding with me. She, they removed the cuffs from her so that I can, uh, you know, get the paperwork together and all of that. And um, I talked about uh, uh, the, the, the affidavit of fact for one, affidavit of jurisdiction called Warranto, is what it was called at that time. And the notice of default judgment and the writ of error, I, I wrote up a, uh, the affidavit of status, nationality. I, I did everything that came to mind. And I said, we cannot move forward due to lack of restriction. He said, okay, I got you. So I'm going to give you a continual um, objection and it's going to be noted for the record. So we're going to go to the state. Anything from the state? Objection. No, 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 no. We're not going to the state. We can't move forward due to lack of jurisdiction. And it's like the more we went forward, uh, the more uh, he tried to move forward, the more louder I got. And I started to project my voice the more. And uh, he said, Mr. L, you're very intelligent. I see that. I see you got your girlfriend here who's following you. Um, but but um, I'll say this. 
uh, you make it really hard for people to like you. So I don't give a damn if you like me or not. You're not sending me to prison for 60 years if you don't have the jurisdiction to move to do such a thing. So we're not moving forward. He said, Mr. L, you're not going to prison. He said this in front of everybody. Now, when he first said it, that first thing I thought was, he must mean today. Because <laughs> they were magicians. So he probably going to say, you're not going to prison. And then later on, yeah, tomorrow, you're going to prison. But next week, I said, no, 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 no. We're not going to prison at all. He said, no, you're not going to prison at all, Mr. L. Just let me move forward. I got to let the state speak. So, all right, well, I forgot what I said at that time. This was in 2013. And um, she squeezed my hand. She's like, look, shh, shh. I was like, all right. So I sat down and I looked at everybody. Everybody in the, in the venue was just looking straight as if they did not hear him say, you're not going to prison, Mr. L, at all. Right? And I started to see the animal husbandry training. The docility training, how they will say something and it'll go over everybody's head. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, I said, okay, let me see how this is going to play out. And I'm going to get the transcripts and I'm going to upload them on YouTube. Uh, hopefully, you know, now that I've said that, they probably won't get it. To, but I'll, <laughs> I'll try anyway. <laughs> but um, they moved forward, you know, the, uh, the state's attorney said, Your Honor, he also. He, Illegally purchased Gardini. He tried to file whistleblower forms against, uh, you know, tax forms against uh, your honor and and the state and um, all of the employees of the state. And uh, he's filing fraudulent documents. And uh, McGann was like, "Wait a minute! You said he illegally purchased the Lamborghini. How do you do that?" I said, "Well, uh, your honor, he used fraudulent documents to do so." He's like, "Well, was it purchased?" You said he illegally purchased it. She was like, "Well, yes, your honor, but it was." Fraudulent. So if it was purchased, then that can't be fraud. And what does that have to do with this case? She didn't say anything. She said, okay, well, we're moving forward. So um, one by one, you know, with the charges, you know, they just so you said he sold a nine million dollar mansion. How did he do that? He sold it. Well, yes, your honor, he used fraudulent documentation. He's like, well, no, nah, that that's not the charge doesn't match the crime. You're saying that these two individuals went into a vacant home. No one was in there, but nothing in there. And you said that they stole it. They stole it. Now, that's what the theft over 100,000 plus charge was. And then he said, uh, and also you said that he committed burglary, first burglary. Although there were no signs of forced entry and there was nothing in the house to be stolen. How did you do burglary? I'm just looking. I'm like, oh, so this is how they do the window that Taj was talking about. This is how, okay, so he's just picking apart their prosecution totally, right? Their prosecution. Because there ain't no pro se. I ain't pro se. I'm a pro the side. And um, I said, okay. okay. So they're just going to make it appear as if they prosecuted the case wrong. Now, anybody that knows real judges, the judges is who? The jury. If the jury said guilty, and he, this man on the bench can come behind the jury and then overturn everything, then what does that say about their venue? Real. It ain't real. It's the Wizard of Oz. It's a strong delusion that's talked about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. For everybody that chose not to accept the truth but wanted to believe the lie. Right? And so here I am today. Right, well, real quick, I went to prison for another case with uh, individuals that had nothing to do with that uh, all of them took a plea deal and, you know, I tried to help defend them, uh, but they didn't want to help themselves. All of them took a plea deal, and a part of the plea deal, they couldn't call themselves Morsh Americans anymore. Wow. They couldn't use L or Bay at the end of their names, wow. and they could not reserve their rights. That was Charles County. They denationalized them and they consented to it. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then one of them got on the stand and then pointed at me and my consort at the 
testifying and say, yeah, they said that it was their house. As if to say, we went from stealing a $9 million mansion to stealing a uh, hundred and something thousand dollar townhouse. You know, all the way across town. If anybody knows the area from Montgomery County to Charles County. And, you know, they, of course, they put me in the, uh, who was saying, you know, be careful, we might be coming to your neighborhood to steal one of your houses. <laughs> Said so, uh, he's a serial squatter. <laughs> All right. I didn't know what a squatter was. I did not know what squatting was. I didn't know. I thought you know, I was like, I squat and squat in the house. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, somebody forged my signature on a public defender request form while I was dealing with the Montgomery County case. Charles County, somebody forged my signature. And then they said that um, I didn't want to come to court, that I wanted the public defender to stand in my stead. Wow. And, and he motioned for a jury trial, motioned for uh, forensic evidence and all of this stuff without me knowing anything about it. And then I got railroaded in prison. And uh, before I went to prison, I'll say this. Um, MST of A reached out to me. I'm not going to say which one. Um, but uh, this was during right before sentencing, and they reached out to me through members of the MSD of A, and they said, Listen, we'll get you out, you and your consort. But you and your they said, Wife, you and your wife, we'll get you out, but you have to promise to not do none of that sovereignty stuff anymore. I was like, What you mean, give up my birthright? That's what the hell I, I mean, I that's why I'm in this movement, I give up sovereignty. But they, they, look, that's what they just said. Now, the brothers that was telling me this, they were good brothers. You know, however, they they were rooting for me, right? In the Montgomery County case and then the uh, Charles County case. But then after speaking to their heads, they said, listen, we can get you out of there as the Sharifs of the land, the Sharifians of the land. But we're going to come in there. We're going to apologize on your behalf. And you have to not do none of that sovereignty stuff, all that driving without a license and make a claim to your land. Don't you can't do none of that. I said, why the hell not? It's my birthright. And it connected with once again with brand she talks to rebase, you know, and what uh our prophet, the universal prophet, Noble Jurali, said, be careful, Moors. Some of your own sisters with turbans and fezes will put you back into slavery. And that's a mental state because we were never slaves. Right? It was birthright that. So I told him no. I came this far. Now had I not gotten all of those other dismissals, I probably would have died up out here. You know what I'm saying? Because it ain't worth it. But it was a divine preparation. Started with a traffic case, then a car then a mortgage that I helped somebody else with, then a rack of traffic cases in PG County, which is why I'm here, comfortable, the way that I am. PG County, no license, right? So, and um, I won all those cases, then Charles County, you know, I was like, I came too far, and I know that it's people looking at me, and I don't even know that they're looking at me, I just know that they're looking at me. If they're not looking at me right now, they will be. And it's not about me. You know what I'm saying? It's bigger than me. It's a principle that I'm standing for. And I didn't have children at that time. But I knew that I was on this planet more than or for a greater purpose than the nine to five Joe. Right? I knew that, you know, we wasn't here for just to, you know, go to work at CBS or Bed Bath and Beyond. And then, you know, tire when we 50, 60 years old. You know what I'm saying? And then for what? To benefit who? Somebody else's ideas. Mm -hmm. Cardinal customs and merely ideas of men that have never done us any good but have always harmed us. I said, nah, I came too far. Wow. If y'all aren't going to do y'all job, I'll get myself out. Maybe I'm supposed to go here. Mm -hmm. Didn't um, the one they called Jesus in Circle 7 go to the decimal prison? And I looked up Desmo, the definition of Desmo, and then I looked up the definition of Crips. You know, Crips is where uh, dead people go, right? They 
all have cells, which is short for cellar. So I said, yeah, I'm good. He said, Come on, brother, we need you a soldier. We need you out here. I came too far. So if I'm supposed to go to the dungeons, I'm going to go to the dungeons, and I'm going to get myself out. And that's what happened. He sent me to the dungeons. One year, I was suspended for 10. And it wasn't the dungeons, actually. It was law school. Because as a man think of, so is he. So it was law school. It was law school. Not just law school. No, 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 no. I learned due process of law in prison. I learned commercial transactions in prison. I don't know if you all know about green dots, but when somebody goes to 7-Eleven, just go to 7-Eleven, pay for a $50 green dot or PayPal or whatever, then, they, you know, you call the person, they're like, yeah, man, what's the numbers? You write down the numbers on a little piece of paper, and then you rip off the piece of paper, and you go negotiate that piece of paper for some candy or, you know, whatever commissary or, you know, some people bought drugs. I, I did I'm good. I don't need that. And um, plus, you know, you hear how they get in there. It's real. <laughs> so, uh, and, but I like commissary. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I was like, oh, so that little piece of paper with a strip of numbers, that's a negotiable instrument. And I looked up the definition of negotiable instrument. Then I saw people put liens on people for an unpaid debt. <laughs> the lien would be, all right, since you ain't pay your debt, I'm coming in, I'm going in the cell. I'm taking the CV, taking the radio, taking the bag of commissary until you pay it back. Walk up after that. Or you're going to get stabbed up. That was the way they lean. Or liquidate. These are commercial terms. I was like, damn, so this is due process of law. The process of law. Notice and the opportunity to be heard. And then, if there's a dispute, then you go before or a court having the power to hand and determine the case. Well, when it came to gangs, they would go to their higher ups if one of the two brothers are beefing or have a dispute, or if they have a dispute with another gang. The higher ups, their court would, would speak it out and determine what's going to happen. I'm like, damn. And then um, some of the uh, uh, the brothers, Pyro or Blood, came to speak to me. You know, they, they were high in rank, and they was like, brother, I said, See what you're doing, man. You a general for real. You're teaching people law. And I was like, well, you know, I've seen what y'all are doing. Y'all are organized. That's why they're so scared, y'all. They're the real games. Y'all just organized. And y'all don't take no shit. That's all. And some of them, you know, got the ignorance among them, but they get sanctioned, right? I watched all of this in prison. And I understood that I did not go to prison. Went to law school. Not saying that everybody has to go there. You don't need to go there. Because if one of us learns it and, you know, we're not for self, then we all know it. So here I am. the In the office of Consul General of Morocco, here at North America. Because Morocco is an empire. And my paper trail shows my principles. It's on WW www.enforceaconstitution.org and that's not just my paper trail it's other people's paper trail that I assisted and this isn't me bragging this is me telling the truth and this is also me being a student of our grand sheet brother Tajiri Bay when it comes about uh, when, it, when it comes to consular jurisdiction the platform, the venue the court that we settle all disputes and I realized that oh we keep running Running to them for court, running to them for uh, remedy. When in actuality, they're pretending to be us. They're pretending to be a court. Guess what court means? You go to court in the Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition, under international law. It says the person in suit of the sovereign. It doesn't say a building that says such and such court house on it. That's not court. That's part practice. It also says the place where the sovereign sojourns with his royal following or regal retinue, wherever that may be. We can have court right here. Us. Because the court is the sovereign. And who's the sovereign? The people. 
That's what I learned. And guess what I did in 2016? I drafted up my own release order and signed it as a judge. Sent it off to Charles County Circuit Court. I forgot the case number. I'll, you know, it's on the website. Um, but I sent it in. I see. I was like, let me see if they're gonna file it. And they filed it. And then um, I had someone, a brother, I'm gonna put his name out there, uh, Porsche Marino. He went and acted as a process server, got the certified copy of the release order, the writ of habeas corpus as of this year, them, issued by uh, Consular Court. It's called the Consular Court. And I signed it as the judge. And of course, you know, word got back to them. We sent it to the commissioner of the Department of Public Safety and Correctional Services. And um and y'all listen and I know y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and um talking about the, the people at the uh, prisons. And um, you know, they packed me up. I was at that time I went from medium maximum security to minimum security. Then they put me in administrative segregation, pending investigation. And the case manager came to see me was like, Yeah, this one right here, oh he's playing. I've never in the 20 some odd years ever seen somebody call himself a judge and signed off on their own release order. Can you believe that? This dude right here. Oh, yeah, he's going to get it. So I was like, well, they filed it. It was like, yeah, sure. So they thought that I had somebody copy a file stamp and a true test copy with the seal and all of that the court of that venue and put it on a release order and then sent it to uh, the commissioner. Of the Department of Public Safety or DOC. And I said, no, nah, I didn't do that, man. All you gotta do is go look it up in the records. Matter of fact, I wrote a Maryland case, sir. Yeah, 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 sure, whatever. Go to yourself, right? So it was 23 and 1. And um, I was in there with a brother who was a uh, power group blood and a uh, young brother, very knowledgeable. And I taught him about mortgages and how they're fraud. So for the first week, every day we study. And I was like, look, just give me my stuff, give me my, you know, my books and all of that, and I'm good. I don't need to go out for a one hour walk back and forth in this little area. I don't need to do that. I'm good right in here. So uh, he eventually got on the cleaning crew and he started teaching the COs in segregation about foreclosures and how a mortgage is a fraud, foreclosure is a fraud. And he was like, man, who the hell taught you this? It's like, man, the brother right there in the cell. So uh, we started getting free lunches, you know, from not free lunches, but the, the real food that the COZ, we started getting that, you know what I mean, in exchange for some information. So uh, it was real cool, but then um, the lieutenant, uh, you know, he came down, this is two and a half months later, before two and a half months later, the first two weeks he came down, was like, yeah, yeah, you butler, right? Yeah, yeah, you, they're going to they gonna have street charges against you. Attempt to escape and uh, uh, escape contraband. Yep, you're gonna get an institution charge and a street charge, and they're gonna raise your security level. You ain't going nowhere. Two and a half months later, he came back, and this is when you know I was getting fed through the cell. You know, it was pouring my juice in between the bars, and he came, walked up. He was like, "Uh, Butler, Butler, you Butler, right?" And I was like, "That's what I'm in here, man. What's up?" He said, "Um." So you mean to tell me what you found, whatever that thing was, you can do that? I said, what you mean, the habeas corpus for the habeas corpus? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 2, privilege of the habeas corpus should not be suspended. Of course I can file that. I told you that two and a half months ago, though. He was like, okay. All right, that's all I wanted to know. And then left. I was like, whoa, 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 Mr. Simmons. Yeah, Simmons. Um, so wait, you mean to tell me you all the way down here, two and a half months later, to ask me if I can really file that, and y'all saw that it was filed. He, he was like, "Well, yeah, I just, just wanted to know." I didn't know. And then everybody that was in the cell next to me, they was like, "What are you talking about? File what?" He was like, "Don't worry about it. All right, man." And they left. And so they all asked me, "What you file?" I said, "A release order." I was like, "Man, f out of here. You ain't filed over there. How you do that?" I was like, "Don't worry about it." You know, they was bidding, whatever, you know, um, trying to make time for pass. Then three days later, I got shipped all the way out uh, Eastern Shore. And they raised my security level, and the case manager out there was like, you didn't, you don't have any extra charges or any tickets 
why they send you out here? I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I was sent to you to find out. So that's when I um, found out that we are supposed to be uh, um, executing the judicial power. Per the 10th Amendment, the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively, or to the people. The states respectively, meaning in honor, meaning in a Republican form of government, per Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution for the United States of North America, or to the people, we the people. So if the power was not delegated to this individual claiming to be a judge, that power belonged to you. Always did. Always did. Islam. And we've been running to the people that were not delegated these powers to execute a power that they don't have. And they never did because they don't have it. And then when I did it, just to see what happens, Case dismissed. You see it again? Case dismissed. So we had the power this whole time? This whole time. And that's because we didn't know how to read. That's also because they trained us under animal husbandry, as Grand Sheik Tajarik Bay pointed out. Animal husbandry, that's docility training. That's for you to be docile and passive. And to just go with the flow. And when in Rome, do as Romans do. We ain't in no damn Rome. Everybody said, said that to me. We're not in Rome. This ain't Rome. And even Rome belonged to us. Called Roma. Mm -hmm. Look that up. So, I'm here standing in front of you today, not dead. Because everybody, oh man, they're going to kill you. You know too much. You're going to die. They're going to kill you. Well, still alive. And I think, uh, no, I ain't gonna say I think, I know it's because the principles is what kept me alive. Not just love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Those are the highest principles known to man. But the principles in the Constitution for the United States of North America is ancient. The principles, the commercial principles, and the friendship principles in the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Of 1787, superseded in 1836, are ancient. The principles of trade, it's ancient. And most importantly, your common sense, that's ancient. Mm -hmm. Those are principles. And the common senses are smell, taste, touch, hearing, sight, intuition, and what? Insight. Insight. What you think you're holding up when you face the east? Right? You're holding up principles. You're holding up a common sense, which is where derived, uh, common law derived from. Common law derived from common sense and it's common to all. We all have it. Drew Lee said, I've taken away all excuses. And that's what kept ringing in my head while I was in all of these jail, going on a jail tour from Charles County, Montgomery County, Prince George's County. Alexandria J. Axtar. And everybody's like, yeah, Todd's abandoned that brother. He was coaching me the whole time over the phone. Because chapter one says, chapter one in the Holy Quran of the Moor Science Temple of America says, man will regain his lost estate, his heritage, but he must do it in a conflict that cannot be told in words. Yea, he must suffer thousand temptations, many. Are you scared? So guess what? Just like a bully that's a, the bully of the school and you knew on the block and you ain't got no wings under your belt, he gonna bully you till you whoop his ass. So beat him. Otherwise, there's dossiers. This is in their silent weapons for quiet wars. There's dossiers they keep. They call it input data. All of the data, all of the information that you input or put in with them when you signed up for the driver's license once upon a time, when you got your bank account 
when you registered your car or when you went to go and apply for work to for a job and it filled out the W-2, W-4, all of that is input. When you signed up for electric, gas, sewage, etc., right? Internet, cash app, that's input data. So they've got data of you giving up your birthright. Yeah, of course, you want the electric to cut on, right? Of course, you want a house, you want a car, you want to work so that you can provide a living for yourself. However, that's input data. So there's no record of you challenging and reclaiming your birthright. So why would they just give you your birthright back by you just putting them on notice? If they're parasites, I'm going to just put them on notice. I should be good, right? I thought that. I thought that in 2012, a few of us, and we were traveling around, and he wasn't messing with us at one point until they found out, yeah, that brother right there, he's the only one that knows. And he took me out, asked Dr. Baruch, asked Ali, asked Hodge. It was the truth, because it's not for just one of us to know. My liberation is connected with everybody. Taj has been doing this all these years because his liberation is connected to the people. So it's all of us. Court is not one person. Court is the person in the suit of the sovereign. Person, meaning personality. The personality or the body and the suit or the pursuit or the following of the sovereign. The sovereign is the people. That's court. So we've been tripping. We've been tripping. They ain't really been violating us for real. They just been hoping you know, this invisible monster in front of our faces, and we just been too docile to challenge it, smack it out of the way. Right? But first, you want to learn how to challenge the people right beside you to say that they can help you. But that's what I say. Anybody say they can help you, tell them, all right, well, let me see where you help yourself. Because full faith and credit shall be given, right? In each state. This is Article 4, Section 1 of the Constitution for the United States of North America. Full faith and credit shall be given in each state to the public acts, records, and judicial proceedings of every other state. Why would you give full, full faith and credit to someone that hasn't proved you anything? This is our fault. So if our fault is we're the problem, then guess who the solution is? We are. Isn't that what the circle seven is? A man must find his devil. He must look where? Within. His name is self. And if man must find his savior, he must look towards Jesus. Right? No. Because Jesus means justice. That's you. Let somebody smack you in the face right now. Who's going to get the justice? Who's going to serve the justice? You are. You ain't going to call. Are you going to call 911? I just got slapped in the face. No. Shame on you if you do. If you know what 911 really means. So, these principles are ancient. They still apply today. And if you don't decide your birthright and know how to defend it, then you're considered to be a subject of these dominions. The Secretary of State um, for the United States Department of State, which is where I used to work at. I was a top secret. I had a top secret security clearance. No, I wasn't the FBI, CIA, or none of that. I was Federal State Department employee. I had the badge. I pushed carts of paper, delivered the paper to the offices, and I went home. I ain't really talked to nobody in there. Other than mother, she worked there. But I did see consuls. I saw ambassadors. I saw ministers. I saw public, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, foreign nationals, and I saw that. And all of them had flags either on their person, like this, or on their automobile or the embassy or consulate or domicile and on the paperwork. I saw flags. So I understood that concept. Without the flag, you're classified as a stateless person, a person without a nationality or a nation. And nationality is citizenship. And that's a compound word. First word is citizen. Second word is ship. Right? So this is all dealing with ships, docks, merchants, Merchants, traders, traffickers, uh, 
what else? Uh, uh, cargo, vessels, and sea. Right? Charters, all of these things. This is what it's dealing with. This is the language that we're supposed to know. Otherwise, you are a subject of these things. That means you're subject to the will of someone else. That's what that means. So, when you go to another, uh, I know you all can see it, but they can't really see it on the um, on Zoom. But when you go to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, this is 1836, Library of Congress, right? See, it's not fake. It's not made up. Everybody, oh, that's not the real. That ain't how you know that that's real. Whatever. Um, Article 6. And look what it says. The first part. If any more shall bring citizens of the United States or their effects to his majesty, the citizens shall immediately be set at liberty and the effects restored. And in like manner, first, that means Moses was making mm -hmm. citizens of the United States slaves. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Tells you this. Now you see why they hid this document and they ain't tell you about it in history school. Then it says, and in like manner, if any more, not a subject of these dominions, what dominions? The dominions of the Moroccan Empire, the Emperor of Morocco speaks. Any more, not a subject of these dominions, shall make a prize, that's booty and prize. That is to be condemned as enemy's property, right, under the laws of war. Shall make prize of any of the citizens of America or their effects and bring them into any of the ports of his majesty, they shall be immediately released as they will then be considered as under his majesty's protection. So what Article 6 is showing is classification. Mm -hmm. It classified Moors that are not subjects and Moors that are subjects. And look at what the Secretary of State said in this congressional record. This is citizenship of the United States, expatriation and protection abroad, letter from the Secretary of State submitting report on the subject of citizenship, expatriation and protection abroad. Right? 1906. You zoom in. And it reads, Sir, there are strictly speaking no Moroccan laws relating to the citizenship of Moorish subjects in Morocco. The fundamental laws of this non-Christian country are based entirely upon the Islamic code, no part of which treats of the subject of citizenship. There are, however, numerous treaties and conventions between the various Christian countries of in the Moorish Empire, Empire, by means of which citizenship in this country is defined. But as I understand from the above acknowledged instruction, that it is not the desire of the department to call for a report upon such lines, I will therefore confine these remarks to general conditions existing which may possibly be of some use in connection with with the information night. They didn't want to talk about it. But guess where they put it? Guess where they put their foreign policy? Hello? Testing, test. Guess where they put their foreign policy? The foreign policy that they talk about in the presidential debates and all that. Well, what, what about foreign policy? And they always kind of skip around it. The foreign policy is called, you ready? Consular no Notification and access annual, fifth edition, 2018. That is the instruction for all de facto federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. This is what it looks like. This is not for you to enforce. This is their instructions. When you go to about this manual, it says the instructions in this manual are based in entirely upon treaty obligations. Treaty obligations. You can study this, but you speak treaty obligations. You're enforcing 
treaty obligation. The brother that was at uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, that put the flag outside of his pickup truck, listen to what he said. I know he was, you know, I rate and going off, right? I ain't giving you shit, <laughs> right? But he wasn't just saying that. He said right here under Article 6, I'm supposed to be set at liberty. M. Ephraim? <laughs> That's called treaty enforcement. That's a treaty obligation. So he enforced the supreme law of the land. He spoke what is called consular jurisdiction. Right? That's their instructions because they don't know how to speak consular jurisdiction. Or I can say they don't know how. They don't have the authority to. They don't have consular jurisdiction. They gave it up in 1956 on purpose. Consular jurisdiction, what is it? Consul is the first word in consul. So you got to know what the word consul means. That is an officer of a commercial character appointed by a nation, which is the people, to reside at or in the territory of another jurisdiction. Not just in the territory, you can also be at the territory. Aren't attorneys at law? It's like being at the door. When you ain't gonna hit, you at there, you, you at law. So then, law. we are right now at the Maryland State Republic. We're not in the Maryland State Republic. That's a jurisdiction that our forefathers chartered for them, the foreign hybrid European colonists, to give uh, uh, allegiance to. They have to give allegiance to what we charter, because we are who I want by word. You already said it. Mm -hmm. It's called reincarnation. Mm -hmm. We went docile. So, I ain't gonna lie, he woke me up. He agitated me, Todd Sharif Bay, and he said, I'm agitating you all. That's my job, I'm a fisher of men. So I'll bring them, and I'm gonna agitate them, but then you gotta do something about it. Not just me, but we have to do something about it. So I got agitated once I seen what this was. Consular jurisdiction. So the purpose of consul is to protect the interests of the nationals that are doing business and trade at that specific jurisdiction. So that means consul enforces treaty. Then you have jurisdiction. The first word, this compound word, juris. That means of right or of all. Diction is speech or language. So jurisdiction could be law language. Consular jurisdiction, treaty law language. When you hear consular jurisdiction, I'm under consular jurisdiction. You're saying you're under treaty law language. So that means you speak the language of the treaty. That means you study the treaty. All right, study the treaty. Guess what's part of that treaty? The Constitution for the United States of North America. That's an international document, too. I.e., that's a treaty. That's why all these states have their own constitution. Because that constitution for the United States of North America was adopted by them. That means it wasn't theirs in the first place. Those principles. Those are your principles. And they apply to you. So consular jurisdiction is treaty law language. So you have to study the treaty. Otherwise, we're continuing. One, citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the laws pertaining to the same in other countries. And stop right there. The laws of other countries. We can go to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 15, 1 and 2. Everyone has a right to a nationality. No one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality, nor denied the right to change his nationality. That is a law governed in other countries in regards to citizenship, because it talks about nationality. So you can declare your nationality whenever you want. Your citizenship. 
Right? That's an international law. Then it says, with the exception that all persons residing in Morocco who cannot prove foreign citizenship or protection are considered if so juror by the course of the law as more subject per Article 6. And you can be made prize. You and your children and your property and your effects can be made prize by what they call mortgages. We ain't talking about just something that you know gets put against the house. No, mortgage means dead pledge. A traffic ticket is a mortgage. It is a dead pledge because it's put against a corporation. Corp. That's dead. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's an obligation. It's a pledge. Only thing you can do is stand in surety for that dead person that they're talking to. They speak to the dead. Are you dead? No. Right. You're in full life. You should be anyway. And if you're not, don't worry. Look at your watch. They'll piss you off enough. Because it's coming. The pressure is on. You know, diamonds come by way of pressure. Or they just break. So this is judgment day. Are you going to be subject to the will of somebody else? Take this jab. Or else you can't keep your job. Take this jab. Or else you can't use cash app. Take this jab. Or else you can't drive in this fancy car that the computer drives for you. Right? Take this jab. Or else you can't get this produce at Giant. Even though it's GMO. Right? Pay attention to what's going on in these few days. Right? Because they're changing. Changing. The world is changing right now. Mm -hmm. And it's not changing because of them. It's changing because of you. It's changing because you're here right now. And I'm here right now saying what I'm saying to you. It's changing because we waking up and we finding out there's a thief in the house. Mm -hmm. That sleeping giant. And it's really not men. It's women that's waking up. Because when y'all were Wake up, you go to what's that? What, what, what question is that in 101 questions for Morris and Mary? Uh, what is the duty of a prophet? Anybody know? What is the duty of a prophet? To save people from the wrath of Allah, to save nations from the wrath of Allah. Guess what the wrath of Allah is? Her. You. All men with wounds. It's you. And I'm talking about the conscious ones and the unconscious ones. Because you are a manifestation of Mother Nature herself. Mm -hmm. One of the things, same person. You get upset, the whole house is upset. Ain't nobody eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? You get upset, and everybody going to feel your wrath. And, and giant, or a, a food shopping store, whatever. They're going to feel your wrath. You're the wrath of our lives. Until you wake up, us sons are going to do our best. And I ain't saying that you ain't awoke. You're just quiet right now. Somebody told me that they come around and keep their powers to themselves. Right? Yeah. One day, y'all ain't going to be able to do that. And I'm going to step right out the way because I've, I've been in the grass. <laughs> <laughs> now, so the key thing is to know how to prove foreign citizenship. Citizenship, another word for citizenship is nationality. Born nationality. Or protection. So you have to know how to prove that. It's not about what you know. Knowing is half the battle. Remember G.I. Joe? <laughs> Knowing is half the battle, right? What's the other half? Proving it. And in law, the proof has to be beyond reasonable doubt. That means you should be able to put your finger on what you're talking about with you're doing. Every single thing that you're doing. Because it's a birthright. If it's protected by law, then you should be able to put your finger on it. Now, it says in two weeks, more subjects lost their nationality only by becoming naturalized in or protected by another country. Treaty relations with the Moorish Empire. So, you already know. All Moors that are outside of 
the borders, what is known as North America, come to North America and they study and they do the actions of, of the Dar Mangle, the Orders of American Revolution. When you go to the naturalization process, they have to take an oath. It's in the Dar Mangle. Go on the website, I got it up there. Uh, the study materials for more look for a dar manual for citizenship and then look for the oath that has to be taken and then it also says you are not a german american you are not an english american or chinese american or any other hyphenated american you are an american and american is written in all caps talking about the day so that's called naturalization Call of law because it's not naturalization. Only the sovereign can naturalize. And then it says, or protected by another country, right? In treaty with the Moroccan Empire or Moorish Empire. Let's go to Article 20 of the treaty. Article 20 is the Article 20 and 21 is the articles that pertain. The consular jurisdiction. Article 20 says if any citizen of any of the citizens of the United States or any persons under their protection, right, more subjects lost their citizenship or nationality when naturalized in or under the protection of another nation having a treaty with the United uh, with the Rock Empire, right? If a a citizen, if any citizen of the United States or any persons under their protection, like people that are in prison or people that have a driver's license, right? So you have a permission to drive or you have a permission to work, work license or business license or, or marriage license. You got a permission to be married, permission to be in love, right? Or permission to be handicapped, handicapped permit. You can't be handicapped unless you got permission, <laughs> right? You're under the protection of a citizen of the United States if you lost your nationality. However, it says, shall have any disputes with each other, meaning controversy, meaning disagreements. Who decides? The consul shall decide between the parties. And whenever the consul shall require any aid or assistance from our government, to Emerson's decisions, it shall be immediately granted to him. So if the consul decides, the consul adjudicates. The consul exercises called judicial power. That's the power to interpret and apply the law. So the consul has to know how to read. Right? Everybody just, I'm a consul. Cool. That's a treaty right. You know how to interpret and apply the law? Have you? All you got to do is know how to read and then apply it. Be what you know. That's the judicial power. Then it says, and whenever the consul shall require aid or assistance from our government, this is the emperor of Morocco talk. Our government, if you want to know what our government is, go to chapter 47 in the Holy Quran of the Moral Science Civil of America, verse 6. And seven, seven says, their dominions and inhabitations extended from northeast to southwest Africa, across the Atlantis, even into the present north, south, and central America, and, uh, and also Mexico and uh, Atlantis Island before the great earthquake, which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. That is our government. For everybody that thought Article 2. He was talking about the United States of America. Wrong. You're not wrong. The concept was wrong. That was wrong. That was incorrect. Our government is the Moroccan Empire, which is several kingdoms and nations within this empire. And it still stands. And that civilized community still holds to the principles. Guess who allegedly bought? Put up the debt. Our government. Did y'all know that China? What they call China, the Manchurian nations, right? 
the so-called Middle East that ain't the Middle East. You know, they made us think that that was the Middle East. What the hell is the Middle East? I thought East was East. <laughs> right? So, it's our government, how do you communicate to those different uh, body politics through what is called consular jurisdiction? You contact their consulate. You contact their embassy. But if you don't speak the language, they're not going to speak to you. Because that's principles. You can't go to them and say, you know what I mean. You, you, you know what I mean. No, you got to say what you mean and mean what you say. And then be what you know. And know you being it. Right? Otherwise, you won't get any aid or assistance because it's principles. It's not personal. This is for your growth and development. The tests, the trials, the tri tribulations that you go through is actually school. Not the institution that got the word school on it. The, the building got school, school, elementary school. That's not elementary school. Elementary school is the school of the elements. You're studying the elements. When you go to university, you're supposed to be studying the universe. But they got you going to university studying some other stuff. Right? It's what it is. You got to pay attention. So, um, Article 21 shows you the diversity of citizenship. If a citizen of the United States shall kill or wound a Moor, they just told you right there, Moors ain't citizens of the United States. Dre Scott decision told you. Morris can't be citizens. Right? But it says it right there in the treaty. This is consular jurisdiction, by the way. I'll remind you. Or, on the contrary, if a Moor shall kill or wound a citizen of the United States, the law of the country shall take place, and equal justice shall be rendered. The consul assisting at the trial, they're talking about consular court. Mm -hmm. And consular court isn't just, oh, yeah, that's the court that the hybrid colonists came over and they was able to establish a court within the Moroccan Empire. Okay, when they had their consuls, who was speaking on our behalf? Consul. Public minister. It wouldn't be an ambassador because this is our land, so we don't have embassies on our land. Look up what the definition of embassy is. Yeah, look up the, the duty of an ambassador. You'll see that. But we have ministers, we have consuls, because we're on a mission. This is a missionary work. Look up missionary. Look that up, because those are government terms. Those are terms that come from civics. You'll learn that from civics. That's why they took it out of school. And that's why Taj said it. Like, Look, it's not in school for a reason. It's not in taught in churches for a reason. It's not taught in, taught in the more science of love America for a reason. Think about it. Because how can someone go to a venue called court and stand in front of their, you know, in their desk, you know, this is your desk, no. If you have you on the right side, I mean, left side sometimes. It's your desk. You stand there. And you got your attorney. Then you got the state's attorney, and probably you know the assistant state or whatever. But when it's time for everybody to sit down, you know you have a seat. Maybe the state's attorney has a seat in another chair. But there's a chair empty. You know who this chair belongs to? The state. It's called the empty chair trick. And and your honor, the state wishes this and the state and all of this stuff that the state wants to happen. And the state's attorney is speaking. The Sixth Amendment says you have the right to face your accuser. Right? The witness against you. I ain't talking about the policy enforcer. I ain't talking about the camera that took a picture of you when you went over the 50 mile per hour you know, thing or ran through the stoplight. They're talking about the person that's accusing you. If you know language, plaintiff, take off the extra F, right? Or the, the F's. 
Point. Point is short for complaint. One who makes a complaint is a complainant. That's the plaintiff. So who's complaining? The state of Maryland? Where is it? Anytime you call that the justice, you just consented to your own demise. Because that goes against common sense. You can't see the state of Maryland. That's the state of Maryland. You can't smell the state of Maryland. You can't, you can't do anything with the state of Maryland. Doesn't even, can't give any insight or intuition. Can't do nothing. It makes no sense. Because it's not common to the senses. So to defy your own common sense, it's to defy the laws of nature. So you deserve your condition. That's why it says in even Proverbs, let a fool be a fool so they become wise. Because in order for you to be wise, you've got to be a fool first. How do you know you're wise if you wasn't a fool? How do you know you're rich if you was never broke? How do you know what the light is if you've never been in the dark? It's called the law of polarity. Don't be scared of it. Embrace it. You're looking at yourself. All you're doing is facing yourself. You're facing those thoughts that you had when you was coming out and you questioned everything. Sometime in between child and manhood or womanhood, you stop questioning stuff. You know what happened? Animal husbandry. That's what happened. That's why you stop questioning stuff and you can't really answer your child when they ask you common sense questions. Take a child to court and teach him civics and then let him uh, see somebody say, yeah, the state of Maryland, like, what the hell? What are you talking about? Where's the state of Maryland at? That's what's about to happen. Because everybody's about to be forced to do the great missionary work or die. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. Just like dandruff in the hair once used to be what? Cells, uh, alive cells that you know function correctly. Now it's dead cells. What happens to dead cells when you wash your hair? It falls away. It makes way for the new cells. Don't forget. This body is an organism. This planet is alive. And she's about to wash her hair. And she's using the colonists to do it. Everybody wants to go against their immune system. Raise your hand. Step this way. Take the jab. You'll be fine. Meanwhile, we got this metaverse thing going on. So we get to buy digital land. Are y'all hearing that shit? Excuse me. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? People's common sense are so far gone now. You know, they, you put the glasses on, then you get to see everybody that paid thousands of dollars for these digital sneaks, digital outfits. I don't know if y'all seen this, but yeah, they got digital outfits now. You can only see if you got the goggles on. That's stupid. That's stupid. Then they're talking about uh, 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 real, real estate agents to sell, you know, digital land, and you could be a sovereign on your digital land. You know why they're doing that? Because the indigenous people taking the physical land back. Right. Give it up for yourselves. <laughs> so, Drew Ali said in the oral statements and prophecies of Noah Drew Ali, he said. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Everything's going to end up in the hands of the more. You ain't talking about the digital stuff. They're they going to take that. I think for real, they're about to take everybody to digital hell. <laughs> and trap them in. That's what I really think. Because it's, it's kind of easy to think that you can put some goggles on and live a life. I mean, I even thought about, you know, being homeless. Like, you homeless and you put your goggles on, you in a mansion. And you good. You just like rats, thinking you in a big big, you know, king-size bed. They about to play everybody that's going for that. So, uh, what I wanted to do was a demonstration of mock court and, uh, you know, mock proceedings. Uh, what we do in the workshops that we have 
used to have it on Sundays, uh, civic classes uh, via Zoom. Um, we do what was called a uh, murder board and mock court. What we're about to start doing is uh, mock court, you know, at some of the venues. I'm not going to put the venues out there because they're going to try to, you know, stop us or whatever. Um, but uh, we're going to start doing you know, mock court and mock proceedings, you know, dealing with traffic, dealing with uh, foreclosures, dealing with, you know, uh, uh, you know what I mean? And basically having the ability to respond. So we're going to put people in a simulation of an event or the stance, right? And you're going to have to take responsibility so that you can have the ability to respond. Um, we did this in prison. I did what is called mock court in prison. I had, you know, a lot of the gang members, NOI, everybody, even even uh, what they call themselves, the Caucasian gang. DMI, Dead Man Incorporated, whatever. Y'all probably know that. But they eat a lot. Some of them even came to my court. And um, I was the sole judge. I had a clerk, I had a bailiff, I had a state's attorney prosecutor, and we had the defendant, right? And everybody got scripts except the defendant. What we would do is I would draft up a summons. And I had the clerk of the court, you know how to drew. He would draw, uh, you know, a, a certified stamp on the summons to appear. And then the bail to the phone. We was in dorms in prison. So we was able to go. We weren't supposed to. We were going to each other's dorms or whatever. And the bail would go and leave the summons on the bunk of who we are choosing, or the person of who we're choosing to come to court. And then we'll put the notice of up in the hallway saying, you know, court uh, on this date, you know what I'm saying, state of Maryland versus the all cap name. Then everybody would come. And they would have everybody in the room. I'll stand outside the room. We got on prison uniforms, by the way. But, you know, everybody, we in prison, you use your imagination very well. So <laughs> um, we opened the door. Once everybody uh, was in there, they opened the door. We was able to go. It was, uh, it was for uh, civic class. This is on Sunday, more science of America. Uh, the grant, the, the sheet, the, the acting sheet at that time allowed us to do it. And, you know, when the bailiff will open the door for me, he'll say, All rise. And everybody stand up. I walk in and I sit down. Like, you, you all may be seated. I've, I've been to court so many times that I know the whole damn thing. Right? So um, I said, All right, go ahead, call the first case. And the state's attorney, I mean, the clerk will call the case, call the case number, da da da. The state versus whoever the defendant is. And the defendant will stand up, come to the case, I mean, to come to the table. We had tables, chairs, and all of that. We had the jury section on it. And um, the defendant's goal was to challenge jurisdiction and, and not allow me to control the narrative and get him to consent to the jurisdiction. And as easy as it sounds, because the simulation of the experience felt so real, we did four people. No, we did five people. All four of the people took plea deals. Wow. We already in prison. <laughs> and you took the plea. I was like, how are you going to take the plea deal? We already in prison. You know, they were like, man, it just felt so real. It was only one brother that uh, stood and didn't allow me to move forward. And he was respectful because I tried to like, you know, agitate him enough to, for him to be disrespectful. He kept his cool. That's because he was listening to me. You know what I'm saying? He listened to a lot of my story. And um, brother's name is Ozzy Wiggins Bay. You know, y'all will meet him one day probably. He's, uh, you know, uh, being a more. And, um, and he uh, he did the, uh, oh, the, also the other thing was you had to uh, challenge jurisdiction in writing before you came to court. You have to handwrite your affidavit of fact, writ of court warrant, or admin of jurisdiction court warrant. And then before the court date, you had to do a notice of default judgment or default judgment. Right? You had to do all of that before you came to court, or else 
we don't want to hear anything you got to say because your paperwork was supposed to proceed and we will move forward just like a court so um i took that concept and i was like yep i'm gonna do this as soon as i get out of prison mm -hmm. so we will be starting these uh mock court workshops i want to say january early january if if we don't have enough time to do it this month because it's simple it's not that simple this is because we were all trained in animal husbandry that means we all all have to be trained out of it you can't just read a book listen to Taj a few times me or whoever else go on the website and then you get it no this is a divine and national movement people just keep thinking about the national as above so below it's divine first so you have to be divinely prepared and guess what? It says at the top of the circle seven, it says the divine instructions from the holy prophet. When he said, keep me, the prophet, as the head of your movement, he wasn't talking about to hold up a picture. So every time y'all meet, I should be in the picture in the front of the classroom. No, the divine instructions from the holy prophet. These are instructions. Don't judge this book by its cover. Or Judge the book by its cover. Look at the cover. If you know what you're looking at. These are the divine instructions. And then you got national instructions. So that constitution is a living document. It's a divine document because it's embodying principles that are ancient. And that's how right in to your common sense. So is that tree. And when I say constitution for the United States of North America, I'm also including the Articles of Association of 1774. Noble Drali mentioned that in the divine one about a prophet for the nation, when he said, and since that constitution was never changed, talking about the Articles of, of Association, 1774. Also, the Declaration of Independence, 1776. Also, the Articles of Confederation, 1781, that was the charter for the United States of America. Article 1, the style of this confederacy shall be known as the United States of America. That's a charter. And then came what? The Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1787. Then came the Constitution for the United States of North America, and then George Washington, who was the ninth president. Thank you. So the Continental Congress, go look in the mirror. You're the descendants. That was you in your past life. Some of you, anyway. All right? So um, we will be doing my court. It will be intense. I don't know if you can tell by the tone of my voice. It will be intense. Because it has to be that way. The, the situations you're going through right now are intense. They're shooting equations at you mm -hmm. instead of bullets, right? From a computer programmer yeah. instead of a marksman, right? From a computer instead of a gun. These situations that they're shooting you at you are quiet, but they make a loud And sometimes you express that loud noise, <clears throat> right? That's because you just got shot with a situation. It's a psychic attack. Mm -hmm. So we're going to simulate those psychic attacks so that you can know how to fight. If you've never been in a, a, a fight before, don't get in the ring talking about, I'm going to beat the hell out of my type. No. In order for you to know what a punch like feels like when you deliver it, you got to get punched in the face. Mm -hmm. In order for you to know what it feels like to exert power you have to know when somebody's exerting power over you and what it feels like so that you can know how to identify the color of authority and then challenge it and look it right in the face and you don't move especially when it's coming to your child but you don't speak from emotion you speak from, from intelligence an intelligent tone that intelligent tone can go high or low but make sure it's with intelligence and if it 
it goes high, make enough people around you with cameras so they can see and hear what's going on. And full faith and credit will be given. We speaking with emotion. And with that being said, I am Lamar Maurice L. Thank you for your time. And I'm going to pass this mic over to the Grand Chief Taj to I'll see you all soon. Uh, we're going to take like five minutes. We're going to change up, get your brother Taj. And uh, Dr. G is going to come up here and say a little bit of stuff. But in the meantime, can we get some donations? Because I don't know if anybody's seen, we're trying to do a little video. Of Taj, Dr. G, and the boys, man, coming in, bringing them in here. Uh, it happened outside, but we're going to put something together as Dower, but people need to know how we operate. So, you know, take finances, do stuff, man. Any little bit y'all can give about. It's fine. It's all cool. Let's take them here again for Brother Lamont Maurice L. That was an awesome presentation. And um, as um, Brother Lee said, we're only going to take about five minutes. But I brought some information. One thing I want to let you, you all know for those of you who watch us on, on the regular, when we keep talking about flash drives, I have 30 flash drives with me. So if you would like to get a flash drive tonight, you might want to get it because it stayed five minutes <laughs> because when we ship it, it's a little bit more, but um, I also have some other information. You know, we're going to a lot of times we can't say a lot of things publicly, and we are broadcasting live, so I'm gonna choose my words carefully. Um, but um, there are a lot of us being bombarded, you know, with various uh, things on our dough. You can't do this. This is like you know, already said they want you to do this, and and some of us are are compromised. We're not even sure if we're around each other, whether or not each other has gotten. You know the bug or whatever, so we try to be careful. Um, how many of you have seen Dr. Botanica on my show or seen the app? Okay, one or two of you. Well, Dr. Dr. Botanica and I um, are coming out with um, a product in the at the beginning of the year, and of course, we're live on our channel too, so now I'm hearing this. But um, we have a product, um, it's been out for a long, long time, but we just found an awesome company out of Germany that we are now in part partnership with and it is a product I have in my hand it's called chokeberry. They might have heard of chokeberry, aronia berry, chokeberry. Well the company that we're dealing with actually has um grows they have vineyards where they do wine, you know, winery and their chokeberries, this is actually the mother from the mother root as opposed to, you know, it's it, it's they grow it where they grow the wine. It's not bitter like dry wine. If you ever had chokeberry, you know where they get the word choke, right? Anybody have real chokeberry? So this is real chokeberry, but it's it doesn't taste nasty. Um, we yes, choke like choke, 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 okay, chokeberry or aronia berry. But one of the things um, I want to I just wanted to share with you what this what I take. Um, can you grab that little tea bottle right there? Yeah, I, this is a one. This is a daily dose of of, of chokeberry. We have like a really small bottles, and then we have um, this is just like ten days worth. And then over there, I got 60 servings in, in a box like, like wine. But this is a serving that we, you know, you take once a day. And really, um, what it does is it balances like blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, antiviral, um, anti inflammatory. And it also, you know, we also have been doing tests in Germany to say that it also combats that. Okay, so you know, I can't say that right so they do, we have we have this product so i brought we haven't even put it out on my channel yet but like i said they hear me um and i brought some with me because it's kind of expensive to ship especially the three liter boxes are nine pounds that's a nine pound box Can you pick it up pick one of them this is a 60 serving it's cheaper to get it like that that's 60 servings like you ever get one box and it has like the the um, spout that comes out and everything, and you, you it stays for three months on the shelf once you open it unrefrigerated, so you don't even have to refrigerate it. But I want to make sure I let you all know about this. If anybody wants to get it while I'm here, I think I've got about 15 of those down here with me. But 
it costs about twenty dollars more, or twenty notes more if I ship it. So that's why um, we brought some. I brought about about ten or twelve of the bottles, and I have some of these small single doses. But this is something that we really highly recommend. I take it every day. Um, I can't tell you that it's the reason why I look like I, I look because I haven't been taking it long enough. But in a couple months, I will tell you it's the reason why I feel like I feel. How about that? Because I I, I really believe in in, in natural. Um, and I also like my AO scan. Does anybody remember me talking about the AO scan? Okay. So I bought my AO scan. I know I won't have a chance to scan. And folks, but it is an amazing um, device. My dad, who's 89, has been in hospice since August 17, 2020. You know, you go in hospice, it's like in and out. But I believe between the Reiki that I was doing initially and most definitely my AO scan, because I send my father frequencies from home. And um, my, my, my father um, is still here with us today because of that. Um, I had a friend just the other day that was suffering from a chest cold with congestion. Matter of fact, the other day I was on Tuesday and my nose stopped up. Who saw me? Who saw me? Tuesday show? Anybody see Tuesday? Anyway, I got stuffy. You did? Oh, you did. <laughs> I couldn't breathe. And one of the um, brother Andre on there had, had to say he wrote, he typed in there, uh, scan, AO scan, Dr. G. In other words, you're talking about the AO scan, put it on yourself. And I had to, I turned it on myself. And and while we were actually on the show, my congestion cleared up. So my friend was sick for like four or five days, a friend of mine, and I just decided two days ago, oh, and then I already got him in my system. Let me scan him. And he's back to the cell in less than 24 hours. He was sick. And so I'm trying, I'm telling you, there's so much technology and so many things out here that we actually have that we only have to contribute to in general. And now is the time for us to we, we, to mount up on everything because they're taking everything they can out against us. Yes. You know, everything is coming against us from, you know, this B. So if, if you get a chance, and I know we have to get out of here um, when this is over, but I do have, I can tell you um, what, the, what the cost is of these products, but definitely I, um, I have about, I think I bought 30 flash drives. Um, when you get it online, it's 25 notes in person, it's 20. So if you have not gotten a flash that's drive which has almost 800 documents when it first started. Uh, Mother Delilah, remember it was only um, Taj's file on here, but <laughs> we got close to 800 documents, a lot of PDFs, a lot of books that you were probably looking for and so forth, and it's and it's on the flash drive. So if you want to get it, I do have about, about 30 here with me. And with that, Gracie, are you ready? Huh? No, I don't have peanut butter sandwich, but I do. Have have a mic to hand over to you. <laughs> Let's receive our national grand sheet, Taj Terry Bay. Come on, boys. Um, I want to bring something to your attention. Look at Marco. Need Marco. Girl, Ali. All right. I'll give, um, Brother and the staff, all the brothers and the sisters and the pool and the staff, come to come up to the stage, please. What's this? Everybody. Mothers first. Introduce yourselves, and I want to thank you for, on behalf of the nation, past and present, for the work that you're doing, and for you having the courage to stand to stand up and enforce the law. So introduce um, yourself to the people. It's um, I'm a Marbe, I'm the Bobby. Okay. It's um, I'm Kiana Amir and Pisa Bell. Um, 
is long, Brother Celine Khalil Bay. Head Mufti. Islam, Noble yeah. Earth, Lil Bay. I reside in the office of Sherry. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to the physical plane. The 12 is your 12 moons or your 12 cycles of the earth spiraling behind the sun that you call the 12 months moons. All right. The 18 is the three squares or what you call the trinity. So you have three lines and three squares, and that's where you get your, this is where you get your trinity. Can you, um, Napkin, you got a napkin I can use as a as a research. Thank you. You get technical skills in the buildings. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Maybe not. Remind me about commercials. We let these go. The permanent, permanent. But anyway. Yeah. All right. So you got nine months or nine moons right then you have the 12 moons cycle that's a cycle then 18 and so that's the three the three square and so the three squared square would be you're trying up and you're trying down. That's hexagonal. That's the insignia of the Moorish nation. And this is Venus, which you already know, which is the, the uh, star of Anahil. And that is what you call free day, Friday, etc. And that's why that's the whole holy day for Muslims all over the world. Muslim is not a belief system, it's literally a fetus. Much of the, much, much of the, um, the real knowledge of the Moorish nation has been totally misrepresented by people or attached to it by people outside. And you need to know what's up. And so when you also hear this is really interesting, this, this <laughs> thing. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and so um, there's another board back there too, I think, if you can bring that up. So you can write, you can um, take some of these notes if you please to. Now, in law, in law of civilization, the honor of your mothers and your fathers um, Sets in principle of all the heritability um, of both the being generation present, generation future. And so the principle of honoring your mothers and your fathers is vital for the issue of heritability. And this is again why those who claim to be Jews and are not Jews or in other words, they're claiming to do it. And keep in mind, Jew is a cover-up. Jew doesn't exist. All right? It is a it is a word used by the hybrid Europeans to artificially put a cover on Saba. All right? So Saba is both the people and the culture of Canaan and Moab. All right? So Saba... And this is where you get this. And so this is the people. And, and culture. So when you hear the phrase in Quran or Vedas or Imagine Law or Torah, Tanakh, etc., in any of the what you call books of the sun. When you say holy, keep in mind the word holy comes from Halig. Halig, excuse my scribble. Halig means sun.
And from Holly, you get holy. So when you hear people say holy Bible, holy Quran, holy any of the books, they're saying some book. Holy Quran means some reader. Are we clear? Um, one of the things that the that the uh, fake Jews did was take Muhammad and Fatima and the infant out of the book Paleotech, which you know is the Bible. This is to make the people think that there's no connection. Um, clear. When you hear Islam, you're talking about Coptic Christian sect. I'm clear. The reason why most Muslims would not make the public connection is because of the fake Jews claiming to be Christians and they're not. So when you hear, like in the book of um, Mark, when it talks about those who claim to be Abraham's children, and also in the book of John, 844, they claim to be Abraham's children, and he says, if they, they were Abraham's children, they would do the works of Abraham. But they are their father, the devil. This is the politics that you're dealing with today. They're claiming to be you, so they're trying to kill you. Are we clear? And so keeping the Sabbath is keeping the culture. It's not necessarily how people take it with the seventh day uh, rest celebration. In that concept, it isn't. It is keeping the knowledge of seven. Because seven is the culture of the planet. That's why you got circle seven on that Quran. Because that's the true Sabian Moors. Sabian Moors, or what you call the Coptic, is like the cross on the, you see that Coptic cross that the people have with the Ankh? You call it the Ankh? That's Coptic cross. And so Kukta or Kapta comes from Hikukta. Hikukta is the proper name of what you call Egypt. So Kapta is the cross, the holy cross, which is the womb. It is a geometrical expression of the womb, nativity, nationality. The loop at the top is the uterus. The two arms are fallopian tubes east and west. And the stem down is the birth canal. And from that, you deal with the tower cross, which deals with agriculture and the levels of waters around the planet that controls blood flow, rhythms, etc. And it also contains memory. This is why in the priesthood, they would use water for libation. That's called Godding. Godding is an action, it's not a being. It means to call upon, to invoke, and to pour out. The priesthood has corrupted it in order to have people looking outside of themselves for salvation when it's in. Wow. Right there. So nativity is also you knowing this. And in religion is cosmology and the maintenance of the philosophies or maxims of natural law. It is not necessarily you doing any of uh, what you call prayer rituals that people keep talking about. That is only, that's part of guiding, that's part of reminding yourself, like exercising your mind until it becomes natural to you. Are we clear? But the point of it is you don't need to do that to be what they call religious. Because most of those rituals end up becoming dogmata, keep people busy, and they don't even know what they're doing or why they're doing it. They just go because everybody says, do this and this. You know, they're going to send you two peanut butter sandwiches. Well, you probably be hungry most of the time, but, you know, get over it. So this is part of nationality. So the crown of the sun given to us by our mothers. There's also, if you excuse me this way. Oh, 
when when it's inverted, and I'm not going to invert it all the way. When it's inverted, and then you see this like that. That's what that. That's what that Liberty Bell symbolizes at Chaka Moxon at the museum in front of Independence Hall. It's a fez inverted. And so everyone that operates here at the Maghreb, the Maghreb is, is Morocco, the most extreme West. And people in religious orders are told that Maghreb means e evening salat or evening prayer. Well, it is presented as that, yes. But it actually means ma Rako, the most extreme West. And as the brother was talking about Wizard of Oz early, Dorothy, you're home. You just bumped your head. So, um, and the red ruby slippers symbolizes your red turban and feathers. Although in the original draft, the writer made her slippers silver representing the owl chemical of the moon because this area is also known as the temple of the moon moon and sun. That is the cosmolog pardon me, cosmological name as well as the north gate for the Maghreb. So um, you see the symbol of the cosmos with the Venus star and the crescent moon, etc. So the crescent moon also symbolizes mother and son or Isis and orders or Mary and Jesus. It means the same thing. All of those symbols mean the same thing. It's just that Mary and Jesus was made by the Constantinians to steal the culture and try to claim that as their own without telling the real truth. Are we clear? And so also the the crescent moon, the crescent moon will also rep uh, represent the uterus and, and the egg. And so, because also the moon um, governs the womb and also governs water. And when the water breaks, the egg that is attached to the top of the universe now becomes a living being, or what you would say. She has did what is called the miracle creation or the mother and son. Get the point? So when you see, um, Isis and Horus, or as the Constantinians recreated Mary and Jesus, you see the Son of God. And so basically the sons, we are the sons of God. That's why the Coptics will say it in secret, but they will not tell you that Allah is the more by this woman. Because that's God. And that's the truth. And she's the star gate. All in her retentives, in her retentives, come through your mother. And so when they, they trace anything of life, they must trace it back to his mother. So you, when you see in the Quran, when it says uh, the child is only as good or the seed is only as great as the mother from where they come from. This is why you don't want women contaminated with belief systems, they must get back to the real culture so that they can stop producing injured offspring that come out mentally sick. Are we clear? Yeah. Because we're, we're out of order. And so what you have is, is hybrid and taking advantage of you who have been asleep and they refer to you as the, the brother with the coat of many color wars that they bury and trying to act like they don't know who you are. And they've been busy stealing your birthright. Are we clear? So don't look at them necessarily all together as a total negative because they're also teaching you. Are we clear? But when they say they are Jews, they are not Jews. Though Jew is a makeup or cover up for Salah, which is you. Are we clear? Yeah. So uh, sometimes they would um, 
pronounce the A long and short. So write that down, Saba, Wasabi. And this is it. And so this also means the human. Sabi means human. It does. And the Sabians are the Gnostics or the founders of religion on planet Earth. And so this is our cross. And this is our insignia. Now originally, and then sometimes we put the crescent on this too. They don't often show you this, but sometimes you'll see it. Because they try to hide the real history. Yeah. Okay. You'll see that too. Both of them are So when they say you declare your nationality, it doesn't mean that you just do something on a piece of paper. You must become what you know. Are we clear? Yeah. And understand the one that they call Yeshua or Jesus is, a, is more a metaphor of the development of the whole body of humanity. Are we clear? Yeah. And not so much an actual existing being, although women always bring sons with that spirit. They always do. Are we clear? Yeah. This is why it is known that Jesus symbolizes justice. Are we clear? Yeah. But there is no J in Ivory. It's a Yah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But you must know the culture to understand when you're given a metaphor distinguished from actual fact direct. Because things are spoken of in layers. And if you don't know that you will look at the books in, improperly, which most people do. Are we clear? Yeah. And understand what you call the Bible, Heliotech, is really Berber gypsy <coughs> history culture. And that's your all. All across the planet. So all the different nations are essentially Berber gypsies. Some some of you lost the culture, some of you kept it, some of you hybrid it, but still that's who you are. Are we clear? Yeah. And that's a basic language group, and they will call it Semitic. They made up the word Semitic, Semitic to cover up your ancient, uh, Amexum, African, Asiatic, cultural, linguistic forms. Are we clear? Yeah. Samskrita, which they will tell you is Sanskrit. Um, is used as your base, um, old one of your oldest languages from which the others are derived, and that has its origin in mid central Africa, which you know as the Yucatan, and also on the east side, uh, um, just below um, Kikukta, which you would know as Nubia, Sudan, etc., and among. The descendants of these original beings are the Sabian Moors, founders of religion and civilization, with their history being covered up with the word Jew. Jew don't exist. It's a cover up. All right. So when you really understand it, you're not offended by it, but you know that when people play these word games with you, you know what's real and you know what's not real. But what you also need to know is that many of these people who have been abusing you have secret societies where this information is preserved so that they don't start believing their own lies. I'll be clear. The Negro black colored brands were created to get you to agree to be them that takes you off the platform of heritability. That's the functional effect of non here, or what you call slave names. 
That's its purpose. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily negative within themselves. It means when you come into this honor of your bloodline and your pedigree, you lose all heritable rights. That's why so-called black people have no rights that any white man need to respect. The white man is a sovereign status. It's not even a complexion. You need to know that too. This is back to nationality and understanding the importance of nationality. But again, you know, just like when uh, Lamont was up here and he was talking about um, the, uh, 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 the judicial system, which is really a human trafficking system, uh, why they go through processes they go through to fool you into agreeing to be somebody that you're not, thinking that you're going to get a benefit. At that time, you lose your birthright, and he just simply claimed you as booty and prize under admiralty law. And this is why they put the fringe around the flags, which is admiralty law. They're bringing the law of the seas upon the land. And so the, uh, um, the demon gods, or the Satanists, who claim to be God, who is not God, who is demonstrated in the book of Thessalonians 1 and 2, calls himself the Holy or the Sun Sea. And this is why the Pope of Rome, hybrid, claimed to be God. And he owns all the corporations on the planet, I'm clear. And so this is also functionally why they set up the uh, 14th Amendment or the dead, chambers of the dead, of the Excretors chambers. And the, for those of you who know, Give one of those black law dictionary to tell. And look up how you before. Always when you're in scholarship, remember it's the, always the four. Fifth is good. However, it's modified. They started modifying everything. That's good for yes. No, even share with sister next to you. No. Now, so when you see the priesthood, when you see the priesthood talking about hell, and you're thinking, you know, this hot chambers down on the ground type stuff, huh? You haven't yet, sis? All right, come on, come on up. Now, this is the meaning of hell. Remember this and write this down. And keep in mind your purpose of comprehending the importance of the or the activity connection to your pedigree. So agree, the name formerly given in England to a place. No, say, say what it is. Hell. They formerly given in England to a place under the Exeter Chamber where the king's debtors were confined. So them all, you say, now you hear them always talking about the national debt. Don't they? Mm -hmm. think they're talking about? They keep claiming that we have a debt, don't they? Don't they? What is the hell? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they put you in POW camps for not paying tithing to the folks of Rome <coughs> and the bishop, and they'll call it tax. They will call it attacks. The Exeter's chamber is really these chambers, ancient chambers, and every major church that they built actually has some of them. And this is where they would put people who did not uh, claim the Pope and the Bishop as being their God. And would give them tithing, which means Roman tax. And that's where your tax come from, or even in the church that they called 10% tithing. And for those who want to do some research, look up Pope Sylvester. And they started the tithing system and blame it on Jesus, Muhammad, and everybody else who had nothing to do with that crap. That is a burden put on the people by Rome, the fake God, the fake Jews. And the, and the deal of this, you'll see that the Pope of Rome have a yarmulke on, don't they? Why? 
because he's a Jew. But they ain't us. So when people keep thinking that the Roman Catholic Church and, and what they call in Israel is separate, we got another book coming. They're one the same bird. And they've been doing what? Devouring nations. Now, um, Excadure, if we read it again, if we read it slow, take these notes, you all. Um, Excadure. Hell. Hell. Excadure. I want you to read it slow. Mm -hmm. I want you to break it down. I'm chilling out, y'all, because I'm hot blooded. This thing is killing me in here. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, the name formerly given in England to a place under the excavator chamber where the king's debtors were confined. And so they want you to write a check, don't they? Yes, to them. That's where the check comes from, excavator's chamber. And also, they are the keepers of all booty and pride that is gathered by their corpse of, this, of their corporate states. And this is how they take the living and transfer your wealth to the dead. That's why they're called exploiters and vampires, because that's exactly what they are. And when they would do the ritual with the crackers and the wine, and would tell you, when they would do the rituals with the crackers and the wine, and tell you, this is the body of Jesus, and this, this is his blood. In reality, they've been doing it in their chambers beneath those churches for a thousand years. And all of your disappearance, that's where they've been going. To the very people that you trusted, that you thought were with the divine, actually the demons. And that's the truth. Part of what you see going on now. Yeah. Yes, we're going to read that in a minute. And what you see going on now with the rest of the world and the nations of the world, this stuff has gotten so bad that they're being forced to act are we clear yeah. and so a lot of things that you're going to be uh introduced to you a uh, little at a time in these, these next coming months although it's been introduced to you already is going to be very very powerfully ugly and you're going to find out some more th things about what's been going on at midgard midgard is the name of this particular planet all right this is not the only earth but this earth is mid Midgard. And you're going to learn about the contamination of Midgard. And you're going to learn about the demon operations of the entire priesthood. And many of you are going to need to be supported or being comforted because this thing is more ugly than you ever imagined. More ugly than you ever imagined. Your concepts about gods and demons have been totally wrong. Your concepts about yourselves have been totally wrong. Um, the importance of your nationality is to get you in a frame of mind of thinking that in its nature rebuts Rome. Are we clear? It is a reversion of the state in both the physical realm and on the spiritual realm. Are we clear? They've contaminated everything. Are we clear? <laughs> Exeter, the Department of the English Government, which has charge of the collection of national revenue, the Treasury Department. It is said to have been so named from the chestered cloth resembling the chessboard, which anciently covered the table there, and on which, when certain of the king's accounts were made up, the sums were marked and scored with counters. For the Court of Excature and Court of Excature Chamber, see those titles. Now, we didn't give you a picture. Just read that one. Also, you might know the source of what you're reading from here. Daniel Cowell Black Lake, Law Dictionary, Ancient and Modern. This is the fifth edition. Black's Law Dictionary. Ancient and Modern Jurisprudence. Ancient and Modern Jurisprudence. Yes. But it means ancient and present, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Court of Expiture. In English law, a very ancient court of record set up by William the Conqueror as a part of the Aula Regis, 
and afterwards one of the four superior courts at Westminster. It was, however, inferior in rank to both the king's bench and the common pleas. It was presided over by a chief baron and four cuisine barons. It was originally the king's treasury and was charged with keeping the king's accounts and collecting the royal revenues. But pleas between subject and subject were anxiously heard there until this was forbidden by the Articulus Super Chartus in 1290, which after its jurisdiction as a court only extended to revenue cases arising out of the non-payment or withholding of debts to the crown. But the privilege of suing and being sued in this court was extended to the king's accountants and later by the use of a convenient fiction wow. to the effect that's crazy. Yeah. to the effect that the plaintiff was the king's debtor or accountant, the court was thrown open to all suitors' personal actions. The escritor had formerly both an equity side and a common law side but its equity jurisdiction was taken away by the statute and transferred to the court of chancery. Mm -hmm. How many of you are familiar with chancery court when they are so-called foreclosures? The point that I'm, the point that I'm making is when you really know the history, a lot of the structure that you see operative out there is very apparent. And what occurs is that most of the people aren't even apparently aware of what's going on when they're going to uh, um, uh, chancellor court which is really the collective arm where they deal with booty and prize for the excavator which is really Luminati or the P2 Mason order of the Popes of Rome who are collecting arms for the Popes of Rome under the doctrine of discovery and unum sanctum policies which is the policy of world conquest which is what you've been suffering from, not racism, not prejudice, so I'm clear. So what's your thoughts? I don't know that I have any thoughts right this second, but the semantics is really getting me. Mm -hmm. I don't have a complete picture, but it gives me my full 360 opinion. Yeah. You, see, you see how it's buried? Mm -hmm. <laughs> court of Excature Chamber, the name of a former English court of appeal intermediate between the superior courts of common law and the House of Lords. When sitting as a court of appeal from any one of the three superior courts of common law, it was composed of judges of other two courts. By the Judicator Act of 1873, the jurisdiction of this court was transferred to the Court of Appeal. Wow. So now you also recognize why you must challenge jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But also let you know that, in fact, they don't have jurisdiction. They're claiming a jurisdiction that they never had. So what happens if you don't challenge jurisdiction? You become a for Warnto. For you up. Oh, here we go. Quanto, an old English practice, a writ in the nature of a writ of right for the king against him who claimed or usurped the suburb, any office, franchise, or liberty to inquire by what authority he supported his claim in order to determine the right. It lays also in the case of non user or long left of a franchise or misuser or abuse of it being a writ commanding the defendant to show by what warrant he exercises such a franchise, having never had a grant of it, or, or having forfeited by neglect or abuse. Now, what would the grant now? So, Paul Marto is your command for someone who claims to have, have authority in a matter or over you, whether subject matter in persona jurisdiction of being subject matter or territorial, your duty and 
obligation is to introduce by agreement of jurisdiction a quo warranto for them to prove their authority. If you fail to do so, they because they're criminals, they're assuming jurisdiction under what is known as tacit acquiescence. That means because you didn't challenge, they assumed that you gave up your right. And just like if you drop a coin and don't pick it up, they pick it up and they make claim of it. Then if you're in the black, black brands or the non gear because because they already have bonds against that non gear which is not a group true living being, which is why it's called the 14th Amendment straw man, man of straw, they claim the man of straw. And this is why you see in the Wizard of Oz, we see the, the straw man says, uh, I, I don't have a brain, but he's talking. <laughs> You get the whole point? And so this is where you get the, the symbol of the straw man. That's true. And then if your, zodiac, your, your yellow brick road is your zodiac law. Emerald City is your green star. Dorothy Slippers is your red flag. The Yeah, the pond today, the flying pond today, the flying monkeys, is is the hybrid experiment. Or what you call Darwin's theory of the monkey, they came from the monkey, not you. That's the hybrid. That's the hybrid of what you call a paleolithic man. And so a hybrid European has been doing what? Trying to genocide you out. And so you you have the wicked, wicked, wicked of, of the what? West and East and all that stuff, and the good witch. And that's the matriarchy, and they're battling. And then you see, then you see uh, uh, during, the, during the end, right? And also from the beginning, you'll, you'll have a reversion. And then you'll see the, the house fall from, from the ethers onto the wicked witch, and you see her stockings. Curl up under the house, so the houses of the zodiac, and the stock market collapses. <laughs> this is thank you, because I'm I can't come out of this, y'all. So I draw this excuse me because I'm hot blooded. Um, thank you, good brother. And so when you see the Wizard of Oz, they're actually telling you about all the operations here and the fall of you, and that's why Dorothy. Arthur represents the matriarchy. And then the dog, the little dog, God spelled backwards. So the dog pulls the curtain. So God pulls the curtain off the demon. How would you translate that to the whiz? How would you translate that to the whiz, even though it's similar in principle, but because they what the hybrid Oh well the whiz is just a takeoff of the Wizard of Oz. No, no, no deeper. No. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the deal of this, um, the, the uh, whiz, um, uh, claim be God, but it's not God, he's a big shit. And body, oh, I'm gonna take all of your sneaks and tie them together. Oh, please, I want to just go home, and everybody's shaking and all those stuff, right? You know, but this is really Dorothy symbolizes you, that's the truth. The uh, pond today, the Anthropopithecus. Which is the flying beast, uh, signifies the nemesis of the hybrids. Uh, of course, Dorothy, really not, you know, um, out of her naivety, you know, in fear, she accidentally throws water on the wicked witch. And then she starts melting. So I'm melting. So the water wisdom and the water, so the water bearer or the Aquarian age. You see the point? So, the resolution is your spiritual ascension and the restoration of your lost estate. And then, when Dorothy wakes up, she's on a, on a sofa, and all of the people around her were also reflective in her imagination of what was happening to her. And they said, Oh, Dorothy. And she's trying to tell the story because she asked her travel. See? So she's trying to tell the story. They said, Dorothy, you just bumped your head. You was always old. 
So this is basically what you're going through, rediscovering that you were brought from nowhere, your home, false gods have been claiming to be or have authority and makership over you, and you're rediscovering. But you're also going to discover that they were also eating your children. They've been doing it for centuries. You know, right now they have a suit um, in Canaan land, in Canada area, um, for them to dig up the graves of the churches because they've got multiple thousands of children's bones under the churches, etc. And they're trying to block that because they've been eating your children for centuries. And the Roe versus Wade that they did under the guise of women having rights to their body is because they needed more meat supplies in the burger joints. And then that would give them access to both the blood and to the organs. That's why you see all these new hospitals. Oh, do you need a new heart? You need new lungs. And these people getting, you know, like uh, burgers for two for five with a soda. <laughs> they didn't know they for for the last maybe 70 years or so, you've been eating your own children. And so the people have been made without their knowledge cannibals of their own own children contaminated by the Satanist Luciferians who've actually been claiming to be government and are not. They're de facto. And now many of you have been getting uh, what they call semi made cow disease. And so you can see the mental the mental state of the people have been slowly deteriorating. Because they've been eating their own babies for quite some time. That's a fact. That's going to come out too. Uh, also, you can do some research into World Court, International Law World Court, and the Nuremberg trials, which they're ha having now at Gitmo and other places, also in Antarctica. And um, you will discover that these major uh, um, so called burger joints are being sued for selling to these people. They, they won't say bluntly what it is, they'll say that there's human DNA. In in, 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 the, in the burgers, rather than just saying that they've been serving these people little babies all the time. It's ugly, isn't it? And that's another reason they closed down Hollywood, because they've been, uh, they, one of their most expensive drugs, which you all know is the junior prone. Mm -hmm. And that's the baby's blood. They would torture the children, bleed them, then take the organs and kill them and eat them. And then sell, then take whatever they didn't use, send it to the burger joints. Um, for those of you also that do a little bit of research on the world, world court trials on, on the human DNA and the meat, uh, look up on your phone, uh, Rabbi Finkelstein. Write that down, Rabbi Finkelstein. And, and this is where they would contempt. Literally tell you that they've been doing it, but because they controlled the court system, and everything they didn't think anything was going to happen. And they said that these people are so hypocritical, they can tell you right to your face that they've been feeding you your babies. Rabbi Finkelstein, all right. Anyway, give Sister Hand, thank you so much, sir. <laughs> and of course, as you all know, we could go into um, multiple areas, but Let's give you let's give you all an opportunity. Give yourselves a hand for it anyway. Um, so let's just talk. Because I know many of you are conscious, but many of you have less consciousness of what's going on. So ask some questions. Raise your hand and we'll pass the mic to you. Come on, brother. Islam. Um, so I know that a lot of people in this room, as well as anybody who's been invested in this, as far as I'm struggling financially with things and how I perceive in connectivity, um, a lot of people are trying to figure out how to contract correctly. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to specify what I'm trying to ask, but be straight. Time factor. Right. Right. Yeah. So basically, um, I wanted to know if you could elaborate on, uh, in in as many ways as possible, about uh, trust, particularly foreign trust and the '98 mm -hmm. EIN, and oh, going about. A couple things that I said about that, but continue. Well, continue. Uh, because I want them to be aware of what you Right. Okay. Um. Well, so yeah. Um. For myself, when I first started learning about jurisprudence, jurisdiction, and birthright theft, the thing that sticks out was from watching your videos mm -hmm. uh, about the driver's license. Mm -hmm. And so that's obviously in tangent with the Cessna K Trust and the Social Security account yeah. that your mother unknowingly found you by. Now, keep in mind, that statement is promoted, but that statement is a fraud. Right. Keep in mind. So uh, there's a lot of different ways that people can go about commerce, obviously privately, but a lot of people, uh, you know, they're not equipped as uh, being erudite enough to be able to challenge jurisdiction via a consular court uh, venue because they don't know. So, and even those who do, I'm assuming, I'm not a specialist, um, there's still many ways in which you can go about enforcing your unalienable rights. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people here you need to write trust. You need to enforce the trust. You need to uh, do a revocation of election. A lot of people don't even know about that. You know, so there's a lot of confusion I have personally, and I think that most people have as far as yeah. what's the most appropriate way for us to right. go about that as nationals. All right. yeah. Thank you. Everybody understood where he's coming from? No, you didn't, because you didn't. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, like people raise your hand and go like this. Back to you know, reality, what he's presenting to you is the um, operations of um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt in, in, in 28 to 33, where they did what they called the bank holiday. And this is where um, the nations of the earth uh, were had stopped buying U.S. Treasury bonds. So you need to know what those bonds were all about. Now, in 1861, when they murdered um, or did the coup d'état against Abraham Lincoln to overthrow the republic, because remember, the republic is actually us. You, Oh, clear. clear. So when people look at the assassination and the coup d'etat of the Lincoln administration, they're looking at it from a perspective of the president of the United States being assassinated, and that's some historical issue. They're not. They're not looking at that. It had everything to do with you. That was action within other actions within other actions. Are we clear? Now, what they did because the popes of Rome have already deceived the world with the marriage certificate, which is actually an instrument, a sister QV instrument of the church. And the people thought it meant that you were making a holy vow to the creator God of the record of this beautiful matrimony when you were actually selling yourself to the folks of Rome. All we clear. By that, the folks of Rome were claiming all inheritances, including the womb with the marriage certificate, and this is where you get the term wardship tenure and ward of the state, which means slave of the state. So they could kick your door down, take your children, and ah, you can't do this because the god of the world of this world owned it, not lawfully, but legally, but didn't tell you. Now, the treasury bonds that were created to back the um, economic system for the United States Service Corporation company registered in Austria, but doing business at North America, 
has been promoted as the country since 1861. And so people through mental training thought that the United States is a country, which it is not. It's a private conglomerate human trafficking corporation belonging to the Pope of Rome under the Spanish Inquisition against the Moors and created what is known as the Global World Trust. The complementary parts of that Global World Trust are called SESTA-QV Trust. They have on every living soul. So they sent out bishop operatives in the name of saving people's souls when actually they're collecting souls for the folks of Rome. That's why in your later years, as people began to get a little bit conscious under um, Johnson, of uh, Skull and Bones, they set up what's known as a 501c3 agreement for all the priests not to rock the boat and tell the truth of this foundation. And that's when they started having these 32 degree masons taking them to the mountaintop, which is your great seal, telling them this is the great seal. This is called the mountaintop. And you see the eye. They said, I've been to the mountaintop. And I've seen the promised land. I might not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. This is the promised land is the North Gate. You're standing on the land, what they call milk and honey. It is yours. The true Saba, or what they would say in the Bible, true, true Jew. You understand? So they've been claiming your estate. Now, with that marriage certificate, by the Pope's of Rome claiming ownership of it and it and deceiving you, making you think it was between you, Jesus, God, and Allah, and all this other stuff. And it was really, he was sold to the folks of Rome. They created bonds on them. The first bonds were treasury bonds. So when you see UST bonds, that's what they traded on the stock market from 55 Water Street, New York, and issued around the world. Nations of the world stopped buying the treasury bonds. United States Corporation Company went bankrupt, I would clear. Particularly when Nova Drawley set up the old canal in 1913. Meanwhile, Woodrow Wilson, with bankers from uh, the Circle Church and Chancery, Fleet Street, including members of the Je Order of the Jesuits, met off Jekyll Island, Georgia, and they set up the Federal Reserve. And so that was set up in 1913 to counter. Are we clear? So that ran, that corporate operation ran until 1928 in that area. Nova um, Drawley set up a civic organization, the Moore's Temple of Science, 1926, to teach government to the heirs of this lost estate. And of course, it was infiltrated under. On Topro with um, Jagger Hoover, etc. You'll find that information in congressional records uh, infiltration into the Moorish movement uh, ethnic files. Uh, this is, and when you get that break off, this is where you got uh, all these uh, so called all of a sudden in the early 30s, all of these uh, different uh, Negro organizations arise, the Temple of Allah that becomes. The Nation of Islam, which is a break off from infiltration. Uh, Sweet Daddy Grace, Father Divine, Bishop Cherry, etc. All of them had this knowledge. You know, and that's why they all began in that early, late 29 to 30 area. When Drawley commanded that the Queen of England hold her honor to the treaties, etc., of course, that. That, that was the infiltration. Uh, so the very day that uh, Drawley had the um, the adepts meet to uh, infuse infuse a religious affidavit for the protections of the people's estates, etc. 1928. Day one year later, exactly, they assassinated him. Woodrow Wilson, not Woodrow Wilson. Um, yeah, Roosevelt 
then took the birth certificates of all the living that was claimed by the folks of Rome because they were no longer buying the marriage certificates that were actually bonds to back the United States Corporation debt. So then they used the birth certificates and other bottomry instruments. And then they started enforcing driver's licenses and things like that. And then your car registration, where that become a bond, and all of this back the United States Corporation debt. And they are called Sister QV Trusts. On each of them, as well as insurance. Right? So they whether you live, they rob you, and if you die, they rob you. Are we clear? So now the Pope of Rome and the Bishop of Rome have what you call routes. And this is what the Federal Reserve is for. Your 12 different routing districts around the north. They have 12 districts. All right. Uh, and then you have the uh, QCIP number, QCIP number, which is those red numbers on the on the social security. That's a bank bond. And so the Sister QV Trust is a what you call a voucher into the World Global Trust controlled by the folks of Rome. Now, in uh, around 1966 to 68, uh, they blackmailed the, the, the remaining resistors in Texas Republic to go along with the corruption of the commercial codes, which are ancient in their principles. And this is when the commercial codes became the uniform commercial codes that you know as the UCCs. Now, this Sister QB trust, etc., people who found out about it have been trying to find different methods of becoming executor, holder of due course of the Sister QB trust. Frankly, truthfully, it will never happen. You know, the, 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 the promises put out there because the people are awakening, but they will never allow it to happen because it's over for them. Do you understand? That's a ball of wax. Um, however, the process is put out there, there for people to um, burn their energy. Uh, when in reality, you will never capture it. You must choke it. All right. Yes. You must choke it. And so one of the things that we've always suggested to the people is to, and keep this in mind for all of you, study the fundamental rules of trust law. Everything that is done in, in government is done by trust. Whether you have the seats in government or the activity that they do is trust. Are we clear? Clear. When you set up trust, and I'm not arguing the living trust, international, or anything about the fact that you set up trust and that you do it with knowledge and outside of their jurisdiction. Because if you're in their jurisdiction, it can be breached. Because you can't give jurors, you can't serve two masters. You can't serve Rome and serve a lot. It doesn't happen. You understand? Now, how would you set up a trust outside of their jurisdiction? Yeah. Now remember, um, Kunzler, remember when, when, when Councilor Lamont was speaking and he talked about jurisdiction? One of the things that has happened with us with the animal husband retraining is that we keep going to them to do things that we should be doing for ourselves. Once you step over that line, you give your birthright back to them. That's why we keep losing. Are we clear? You know how a lot of people will set up a trust and then go get an EIN number? They just walk right back into the, into the expertise chamber. Meaning like this. All right, like say this. Um, say you're Russian, right? Right? Which is a scenario, we're doing a hypothecate, a hypothecation uh, issue. Would you go to 
uh, China to ask them for permission for you to be Russian? Would you go to China to ask them for an application with a number for them to recognize you and your right to your inheritance from your mothers and your fathers? Likewise, people do they do what? Go to the Jesuits, which is the Inquisition Revenue Services called the IRS, and ask for a form for them to recognize your trust. And as soon as you did, you gave it right back to them. All right. Now it's back to what Lamont was saying. We must become competent in comprehending the importance of nationality, what it really entails. You can no longer lean on ignorance and have memories. They don't go together. All the efforts that we've been putting in mosque, church, temple, etc., with this all this dedicated study, you must put into your birthright. You must want your birthright back as bad as they want to steal it. They've organized themselves around human trafficking. You have to organize yourself around human liberty. You have to be in opposition. And you have to do it intelligently and knowingly. And so what you want to do is that you want to study law, trust law, understand and comprehend, understand, understand the concepts and comprehend that all things are done in trust and then begin to construct your own trust but it must be a proper person it must be appropriate for sonus of yours for you to be so heard us come on uh, we, we want to we need for the people to hear us at the recorder yeah come on uh, now, my question is still pertains to trust. Um, even with the foreign EIN number, it's still the same aspect as uh, it could be breached as well. With, 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 with you saying, can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. With you saying that, say jurisdiction and then ask your question. All right. As say far. jurisdiction. Jurisdiction. Now, ask your question. Now, even with the foreign EIN number, is it still possible that it will be breached or for that, you know, help? All right. So, um, what's the EIN number? Where the EIN number come from? Your nation? No. I guess I answered my own question. Say jurisdiction. Say, I guess I answered my own question. And what is the IND employee identification number? That's under the 14th Amendment. All right. So that, that that's, not even was still that's back to that what thing. the point that we're trying to get across to everybody. This one. They keep they keep trying to get out of Rome while feeding Rome. They keep going into the in, into the cave with the vampires with you know I like this. This is right up there with all I got the shoulders and stuff. And then they come out and about this is a fashion mark. No, it's not they just suck on you. You don't go the only case with vampires if you ain't wearing a turtle neck splash. It's like that. I can see that. Really, seriously. This one. And we keep we keep going home asking Rome to solve problems that Rome did to us. I guess that's rather why, than being ourselves. I, I guess that's why the reason why I never use my uh, I do have a trust with a foreign EIN number. But I never used it. I now, have it. Remember they encouraged it because they encouraged it because because they know the people wake up. But keep in mind, the issue is power of attorney. Because you're talking the state, aren't you? Uh, yes. Oh, so now, come on up here. And also, Black Law, Fourth Edition. Hey, concepts. Um, re <laughs> reason why I talked about uh, drafting my own release order is because I knew that I could not go to home own for something that was already mine. So you do it. You would, you would, huh? Oh, the term. Take them to a state. Status. Status and a state. Status and a state. Status and a state. Status and a state. <laughs> so you draft your own trust. What you can do is you look at how Status. they form a, formulate a trust and formulate your own trust without the EIN number. 
you create your own registration number and then register it in your own file cabinet. And then someone that you know, give them that, that registration number and a copy of a memorandum of the trust or a memorandum of trust. But if your trust that is private, exists. yes, that shows that it exists. But if it's private, if you don't make it public, because now it's public. So it's private. So if me and her have a trust, none of you all are supposed to know about it. It's not about getting wrong to recognize it. It's not about that. You recognize it and know that it exists and, and the trust. The Constitution and Treaty are trusts. Yes. They're trusts. So if you want to know how to study a trust, study the Constitution. If you don't want to know how to study a trust, study the trust that you have with your friend. That's a trust. If I let him borrow my car, guess what the trust is? Who's the trustee? Him. Who's the executor? Me. Who's the beneficiary? He is in part because I let him borrow it. But I'm the officer as well. The car is the trust. Hey, man, it's the keys. Now, if I wanted to express that trust in writing, it's called the depth of trust. And then you'll put the stipulations. Look, man, you can't drink and drive. Don't drive it. There's too many people in the car. You can't use it after 10 o'clock. And, and, and sign right here so that I can know you agree to these terms. That's a trust. Keep it simple because it's common sense. That, to think that, oh, man, I got you, bro. To think that we have to go to Rome <laughs> to, 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 to get validation, that's still animal husbandry. It means you're not competent. And it means you're not competent. You're still giving up your birthright. That doesn't mean you're stupid. You're not stupid. It's just that you're still under the training. You got to come out of that training. And this is called training. Islam. 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 Now go ahead and read Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. What are you reading? Status. What page? Make sure they can't do this. Yeah, you know. Status. What page? Oh, for the reference. Page. 1580. Black's Law Black Dictionary, 4th edition. Yeah. The word, term, status. Standing. State or condition. Reynolds versus Pennsylvania Oil Company. 50. You don't, you don't have to read the law stuff since we got the law. I follow. Status. Standing, state, or condition. Status is the standing. Because remember, in law books, if you had the mic, to ask. so put it in what you make. Shake. Status is. Status this is a state or a condition. The legal relation of individuals to the rest of the community. The right these capacities and incapacities which determine a person to a given class. A legal relationship not temporarily in its nature, nor terminable at the mere will of the parties with which the person in this state or I mean, in our concern, our concern. While the term implies relation, it is not a mere relationship. I mean, that's bad. It's not a mere relation. It is also, it also means the state because it is, signifies the condition or circumstances in which one stands with regards to his property. You read right over now, Peter? I stopped. Yeah, now, right. now we are uh, escape. So you do a trust in relationship, you do a trust in relationship to, to preserve or protect, right? And your heritability, right? So therefore, you don't go to the opposer to ask them for permission. You put them on what? Lawful notice. Go ahead. Black Lord's Dictionary Fourth Edition. It's statement. 
the interest which anyone has in land or in any subject or property. In the state in land, tenement and heredement, and heredement signifies such interest as the tenant has therein. The condition or circumstances in which the owner stands with regards to his property. In this sense, a state is constantly used in conveyance and connection with the word right, title, and interest, and is in a great degree synonymous with all with all is synonymous with all of them. The degree quality. Oh, I'm sorry. The degree quantity nature and extent of interest which a person has in real property is usually referred to as and it varies from absolution of the absolute ownership down to naked possession so you can see what occurs now look at this now use your common sense and, and so involving concepts, what we're talking about. The very nature of our thinking, because of the training, we go to the IRS and get an EIN number, et cetera, which is a conditional or what you call an app is a subjugation. So now you go into their jurisdiction. The first thing you want to look at the IRS established in the treaty or in the Constitution? No way.
people be conscious. Some people. is that you're doing what you're doing. And so as you keep on doing what you're doing, what happens the next generation starts looking at that, they start thinking. What happens, their intuit minds will open up their DNA, which is cellular memory. Because the gods are among you. They're not outside you. Where it means in the heliotech, it says, a seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And all other things will be added unto you. We keep looking at material additions when we need to claim the estate. And we need to be the proper heirs. And so this is what's demonstrated in the book of Isaiah 64, 65. When it says, I hold my hand out all the day long to a hard-hearted and rebellious people who are not called by my name. When they repent from their sinful ways, I will hear from and heal their land. So write that down, land. Look it up in the Law Dictionary. And I'll, I'll say that with Randy. Thank you all for coming out. When you look it up, you'll see that land also means more. It'll say more. So you're the land. It's not. Thank you.